welcome How to about Die that? Rolling. Woo. You missed a thoroughly exciting conversation about stamps, um, <laughs> but we best play some D and D uh, to <laughs> replace that. Um, well, welcome. Uh, if you haven't already guessed, we're about to play some Dungeons and Dragons. We are joining in the world of Asher, um, a relatively oppressive world, um, which is magical races dying out, elves oppressing um, other peoples, um, and we're joining our, doing quick maths, five intrepid adventurers. Um, normally, there's some kind of table juggling going on. It's very exciting. Not really sure what that's about. Well, <laughs> maybe we'll... Put the teasers in the bowl. Oh, no, we're putting no, the no, teasers in a bowl. I meant put the, put the, mount the, the microphone <laughs> on the bowl so well, that you... Now the Maltesers <laughs> are over there. Yeah, it was a Malteser-based <laughs> discussion. <laughs> But we're already there. Um, it is traditional for us to start with uh, a little bit of an introduction. So while we're dealing with the Maltese, a fiasco, um, please enjoy a small uh, introduction to our session. That's me. No, you know, oh, don't that. To do that. It's the no. professionalism. Chris Jericho do the worm? No, Scott. Hello, <laughs> everyone. Welcome back, back to the discussion of stamps, or Chris Jericho, or Chris Jericho on stamps. <laughs> We're open to all lines of inquiry. Chris Jericho. So we have um, our wonderful recap of uh, last session, which will be brought to you by our very own Felix the Fur Knight. I've got food in the mouth. <laughs> While he eats his food, we're gonna see what I have to deal with. <laughs> this is much harder. Two years, <laughs> much harder than you make it look. I'll be honest. It's so effortless when you try. I can tell that was Felix's okay. voice or Josh's food voice. <laughs> the same thing. Aren't they? Hello, welcome to Felix's kerfuffle. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Last session. Oh dear. We started by leaving the town of Wick. Wick. Thank Sorry, you very much. Nice. Half a second. And there. heading north, based on Felix's keen insight and persuasion, uh, we had join us, Alantrix. We headed north. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you. Um, on the way, we took a rest because we had two members who had just been in massive comas. I need a little bit of a sleep to get rid of their exhaustion. As we waited and prepared, a group of travellers came down the road from the north to the south towards Wick. Felix, being the mighty hero that he is, decided to stroll out and welcome these people and talk to them. Uh, he rolled poorly and they were kind of shocked to see a talking dog standing in the middle of the road with a six foot, five foot sword. Facts. That didn't go well, but we did catch up with these people, and they told us that they were coming from a town from the north. I don't have my notes in front of me. Villain. Thank you. And that the they had been forced out by uh, taxes, by any which way to get rid of these people. And uh, this was kind of confusing for us, so we knew there was potentially something up going forwards. Um, Jack's checking the sound mix. That's always good news. Um, <laughs> uh, so having. <coughs> caught up with these people, and um, we had uh, a new character arrive who had gone through the grass that we were sleeping in and talked to Malcolm. Do you remember his name? Sildon. Bam! Nice. Sildon. So, Bam. Sildon. Bam. Sorry. An ex-soldier from the Equin army. Perceived ex-soldier. Perceived ex He was at least wearing a soldier's uniform. Correct. Caught mostly, up with Malcolm. Most, mostly a soldier's uniform. Had his gear. Mm-hmm. And uh, let him know of a place called Bastion. 
to the north, where groups of people who were maybe potentially working against the elves, you can't really tell, it was people who were, you know, they, they're at their last straw. Slightly dispossessed. Mm. And based on Sildan's general outlook, we can assume they're, yeah, you're kind of ragamuffins mm. and uh, pickpockets. But My kind of people. Yeah, exactly. And they were, uh, how, they were past Wick, to the left, through the forest. That's where we were told they were. So we uh, we continue to head north, having had a conversation, uh, realizing that Felix maybe needed to keep a little bit low, given that he was a talking dog. So he was going to uh, walk on all fours and head north. So we headed towards the town of Villain. 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 Thank you. <laughs> and um, caught up with two gnomes. gnomes who were working on the road, and a cage made of what I can remember is either bronze or copper. Inside the cage was someone we couldn't fully comprehend to begin with. and Speaking into my mind. Speaking into Malkin's mind, so clearly a magic user. These two gnomes, uh, Frederick and Valen. Friedrich. Friedrich and Valen, I apologise. I don't know gnomish personally. Um, explained to us that they were trying to build a bypass essentially through this town <laughs> and it was quite clear that the reason people were being pushed out of Villain was because the elves just kind of fancied a quicker route south and um, they didn't really mind screwing over these people uh, this town was a uh, Mad Madalox farm Madalox? 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 Madalox farm yeah. you say Madalox, uh, I say Madalox <laughs> <laughs> and the, the Madalox Madaloxes weren't there so clearly this town had been run down and the people pushed out so we caught up with these two gnomes. They did not want to know uh, Elantrix very well. She's an elf, I believe, entirely, not half-elf. And um, elves uh, are held in high stature here, especially by gnomes. So uh, that gave us a little bit of an ability to catch up with the person who was in the cage. Um, this was an elf, or someone at least who looked elf-ish, in um, olive robes called Knot. And he was a magic user. Elantrix showed Knot her shield, which had, um, can you remember the name of the god? A Fidia. A Fidia on it. Oh, Fidia is the god of magic. It is highly, f- highly, highly forbidden. Yes, to uh, worship or at least, you know, support uh, a Fidia. Um, I don't know what it's like in the. Uh, in the yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm behind a Fidia. I vote a Fidia. Um, so we caught up with Not. Um, can we remember what Brightly in the North was all about? Ah, they were connecting. Uh, a road from Brightly to where we were. Uh, and we managed to break out with a few solid punches and kicks from Malkin, uh, not out of this cage at the end of our session. We join the group as uh, Zolan's gone off to steal food out of these people's that are houses. Not stealing as it is going to be, to be, about to be, it's about to be <laughs> liberating. torn down by a, bol- by a bulldozer, so yeah. I'm just using, making use of it. I'm recycling. Lib- liberating. Yeah, I'm upcycling. Not lawful good. Uh, Thorny and Felix are generally hanging in the back and having a good time. Malkin um, is in front of this cage that's just broken and is joined by Elantrix. Marvellous. Thank you very much to Felix. I'm going to use my notes next time. It's much easier with my notes. <laughs> sounds good. It sounds good. Um, so you'll remember the last thing that happened in uh, the last session. You bust this cage open um, and out popped not right. and collapsed um, with okay. much not ceremony. Good face down on the floor. Um, we're going to start the session by zipping straight over to Zolan. Ooh, Zolan, you're looking in the pantry, um, you're taking a look at bread and cheese and the things mm. that you found. Um, and can you make me a perception check, please? Sure can. Oh, it's actually there somewhere. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Uh, it's 13. 13, it's good enough. Um, you've heard a sound, you hear a sound, I should say, um, that you haven't heard in a very long time. Um, it's a mixture of, just in the background of your ear, if you imagine a mechanical clock ticking. Um, but in the background, you also hear a... You are almost certain... Is it explosive? No. Oh, very similar. <laughs> oh, crikey, yeah. You imagine that is okay. the sound of a clockwork boiler clicking on. Ooh. Tea time. It's still going. Is it? Can I check the taps for hot water? You certainly can. Is it going to warm up? You're going to struggle to find taps, though. 
Most mm. of these houses are fitted from a central well, so they would have had a basin in the house it's and they the would come out the central well. It's still ticking away. What's the boiler for? Meanwhile, we're going to cut outside. You stood around a cage, you've no idea what Zerlin is, you can just about make out the sound of gnomish conversation somewhere, it sounds fraught and relatively petrified. Um, Not has collapsed in front of you, almost prostrate on the ground. Um, and that is where you find yourselves. Okay, I'm going to um, <clears throat> do the decent thing and reach down and, and help Not up to his feet. Wonderful. Um, you help him up. Um, you feel that actually he's fairly slight of frame. He's very frail, actually. Um, can you make me a... Can you make me a perception check, please? That is a natural 20. A natural 20. Ooh. Bloody hell. Well done. So it's, it's <laughs> 22. I'm feeling 22. That's a... Um, <laughs> That's a Britishism, if you've never heard of that. <laughs> Bloody hell! Um, Marvellous. Not is not, not is not, not what he appears to be. Oh, no. Oh. Um, you Do notice his, his form, his elvish form, um, that you've seen, um, shimmers slightly. Um, to you, you're not sure if anyone else is seeing this, um, his robe seems that that's fairly normal, but you notice that actually he is much, much slighter than he appears. He seems very gaunt, very thin. Mm -hmm. So his robe, you, you seem to pass straight through his robe and grab some kind of gaunt, almost skeletal frame. Um, as you do that, he raises his head to look at you. Um, and instead of the relatively alluring, relatively charismatic and um, elvish frame that you saw previously, um, you see an elvish face the ears are elongated even further, perhaps um, six inches in length. Um, similar length to what you would remember Nollis, so much Ooh. longer ears. Um, his eyes are pitch black. And when I mean pitch black, I mean that you see an absence of eyes in the nothingness um, instead okay. of where there would be eyes. Right. Um, his lips are black, um, not painted, they seem to be natural. Uh, and protruding from his forehead is a foot long or two foot long horns yeah. that raise directly from his head, um, much almost like an antelope, and they raise directly. And they're banded, um, mostly black, but a deep shade of kind of pink or purple. Um, he seems fairly frightened um, looking into your eyes. Um, and you're going to have to make me a wisdom saving throw, please. Ooh, and you thought a talking dog was going to be hard to do. D20 and then you've really got saving throws up the storm. Up. There you go, top there, you've got right. a saving throw bonus. Just to point out, nobody else has seen this. Oh, that is a natural 20. A natural 20. I Two like, 20s in a row. Uh, well I like my, done. I like my new dice. So ones for the rest of the night. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So that's a total of 22 again. A lesser man would have been frightened. Um, of what they've just seen. Um, you are not a lesser man. You've seen combat. You've I'm seen an angry war. Man. You're an angry man. <laughs> um, so you may proceed as normal. You are completely unaffected by any effect that it would be. So I've got, I've basically, I've got a hold of him. I've picked him up. And I'm, so I've, I've perceived this. Mm. This. You can still see it. Um, his original form. So it's not just been form. just like a flash. It's no, you can that's see what it. I can that's see. what you can see now. Um, so his original form seems to be there, but it's almost like a shimmering image. Right. None of us um, see that. <clears throat> Sorry. None of us see that. None of you see no, that. Yeah. Um, and only Malkin can see it currently. So um, I am. Whereas I would have sort of helped him up and plonked him in his place, kind of thing. I'm holding on to him. Hmm. What are you? <laughs> what the hell are you? I, 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 um, I'm terribly, ter terribly sorry, Malkin. You, you, you weren't supposed to see that. Why not? Um, well, uh, not not everyone reacts well the first time. Are you seeing this? So I'm looking around asking to my companions. You oh, let's do it. Can you all make me a perception check with advantage, please? I'm out of this, right? 
you are out of it, Zelen. Thank yeah. you. The advantage, because obviously you've been you've been driven to investigate something, to look at something. 18, 18 14, 14 23. 23. It has all passed just a pass in the land tricks, but I'm going to allow it on this occasion, because um, otherwise it would be awkward. Um, <laughs> you see exactly what Malkin has seen. Because you were braced for it, I'm not going to make you roll um, to be afraid, which is what that previous roll was. Um, you now see this form. Um, feel free to react to it. I've still got hold of him. Yeah, he seems panicked. He's looking around to all of you now, kind of look, looking at all of you individually, with oh. these kind of these eyes that don't seem to exist. They seem to absorb light. Am I able to infer the race? You can try it. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, okay. You want to figure out what race he is? Yeah. So, um, give me a history check. Seventeen. 17. Um, you've heard talk through your study of history, which most people won't have access to. Um, you've heard talk of a race of horned elves. Um, very few references to them. The, in particular, it's, it's more important to you because this references them um, during difficult times in history, shall we say. Um, particularly times to do with sundering of the world and kind of um, the world in great distress. All references to the horned elves seem to cultivate a that reference, but nothing specific. Um, up until this point, maybe you thought they were a myth, maybe you genuinely mm -hmm. believed in them, that's completely up to you. Remember, horned elves are one of the, the children ones. of which, yeah, one of the chosen races. Yeah. Horned elves, dwarves, can't remember the rest of them. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? It's a horny elf. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I've, I've, um, you are very perceptive um, it's not um it's not usual for me to be in this position uh, I'm sorry I, I didn't mean to lie to you I simply only didn't want to um, uh, make our first meeting awkward um, is he still on the floor no he's, I'm, he's I'm, I'm I'm basically <laughs> how tall is he uh, he's tall he's probably about five and a half feet um, so so yeah, I'm basically I'm, I'm holding him up okay. I've, I've lifted him up off the floor and I haven't let go Felix is going to wander over, sword on back, for all fours, so not standing up, um, and uh, give him a sniff to see if anything's weird about him. As he comes close, um, as you come close, he averts his eyes, actually. He seems to think that you are hard to look at for some reason. Okay. Subservient. That's why. <laughs> uh, he's just going to give him a sniff. Yeah, he's going to investigate him. Go ahead. That's not the best number. Um, it's a one plus minus one, zero. <laughs> I can't smell anything. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, got no keys. smell at all. It's a one minus one. Yeah. Cool. You are completely distracted. Um, <laughs> probably just the fact that you're, you know, you don't know whether you're smelling the real him, the false him. It's all yeah. very confusing. And there are a lot of smells. In particular, you get a smell of um, um, some kind of ignition fuel. Okay. But it's not coming from not. It's coming from something else. It's kind of overwhelming the smell of ignition feet. <laughs> and meanwhile, so <laughs> you hear this, <laughs> this ticking sound going yeah, yeah. on. <laughs> Do I, can I perceive where it's coming from? Is it upstairs? Or yeah, is go it... ahead. Um, you have yeah. lots of skills as an artificer, so what <laughs> skill would you require? Do you, what, what, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to figure out where the noise is coming from? Yeah, where the noise is coming from. Just in the general direction. Oh, is that maybe, upstairs? Maybe is an it? investigation check. I'm glad you reminded me. You're an intelligent, <laughs> dexterous <laughs> hero. Uh, with investigation? Yes, please. I think I've got good investigation, I think, wherever it is. Uh, it's not too bad. Yeah, 17. Cool. You strain your ears and you can hear that it's, it's, it's actually coming from outside. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh, the front or the back? Uh, it looks like it was the way you came in, which was most probably the front leading out to a courtyard in yeah. the centre of the town. Um, so it's coming from outside. Well, it doesn't seem... It's, not... This is highly illogical. Um, is these devices are gnomish. Um, yeah. Not used in the Elven Lands as far as you know, apart from maybe in kind of the houses of dukes and lords. Yeah, um, okay. yeah so it's, it's unusual. I'm going to pack up my bread and cheese. I haven't come all this way for nothing, so I'm not leaving without it. <clears throat> so, yeah, not not an excessive amount. Just, you know, just a load of bread. Enough for all of us. Weird of cheese. Oh, yeah, bring it enough for everybody. Yeah, I've got enough for everybody. Nice. I'll, make a, I'll, make a, I'll step outside, front or back. 
You step out. Uh, was it the front where the noise was coming from? You can yeah. use either door. Yeah, they will go out the okay. front. Out the front. Interesting. Um, you mm. notice the noise you can track pretty readily with that roll back to uh, a pile of crates. Um, the, the crates um, have uh, gnomish markings on them, not so yeah. much words, but kind of sigils to do with yeah. construction and various other things. Um, that tick, at least one of them is ticking. It's hard to tell at this point. Uh, is there any more people in the vicinity? Have we got? Where's, where's, where's my party at the moment? So they're around this? kind of an outhouse building. So there was a couple of buildings as you came in, and one of them was where the cage was yeah. um, set. So they're probably just round the corner of a building. So they're within earshot. You can hear some kind of conversation going on over there. You can hear some kind of conversation in Gnomish going on yeah. somewhere in one of the buildings that sounds pretty fraught. Um, but that's all you can do. I'm gonna head over and investigate if you don't mind. So we'll just go over, yeah, go over to it and have a little look. Yeah. Cool. Um, I won't make you roll again. You've had a good investigation check. Um, what I will do is you probably have proficiency in some kind of tools. I imagine. I've got a fair few tools I'm proficient in. Hmm. Thieves' tools is a mandatory. Yeah. I can't what tools there are. Several culinary. It's a new one. Culinary, like I'm that. Not very good at cooking, though. What about something like? Uh, Something construction based, maybe Jewelers, Mason's tool, jewellers. Jewellers would do. We've got yeah. thieves, got alchemist supplies, and tinkers oh, tools. Oh, alchemist supplies. Tinker. Alchemist go, supplies. Go with tinkers tools or alchemist supplies and make me a roll with your proficiency based on that, which I imagine is intelligence. I don't know, to be honest. You'll be probably plus I've got three. A, yeah. I've got a process, yeah, just with that then, yeah, cool. It'll probably be. Yeah, it'll be plus three. <laughs> Pow! I'm trying to quick math. 17, sorry. 17 <laughs> is very good. Um, <laughs> That's good. That's all right. These ticking boilers can be used to heat water. They can also be used to generate steam. Ooh, okay. Um, Moonshine. Yeah, they can be used to generate steam. <laughs> um, they can be used to heat a boiler, which can pa can power particularly powerful devices. Cool. Of a uh, explosive nature, but worry now. <laughs> Based on. What you've rolled so far, yeah. and based on what you're looking at, you know that there's something. You, your brain starts to tick this over. Yeah. Hogs start whirring, and you start to think, "Hang on a minute. This whole area is meant to be demolished." Yeah. And gnomes aren't particularly strong or good at demolishing things. They probably brought something with them. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> This, uh, is how, this is how the party died. Just stood <laughs> yeah. over a box going, it's like, oh, 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 it's it's ticking what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. What type yeah. of fuel? Are we sure? What type of fuel? Uh, it's something with a high, um, it's a starter fuel. Mm -hmm. So it's something with a very, you get this like aromatic fuel for beginners. He's a dog. Yeah. Will you let me roll for deeper insight into of course the fuel? Yeah. Yeah. You can probably look a hint of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, roll with advantage. Good name. Cool. Yes. It's going to be... Getting a hint of boom. 17 plus 3 for insight. Yeah, go ahead. Cool, it's 20. It's a 20, yeah. cool. Um, you'll notice that Not is incredibly happy that attention has been diverted from him. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you basically, like you always see it in the cartoons, you can trace a dog-based scent mark mm -hmm. that goes around the corner and is leading you around um, to what you will eventually see if you choose to look. Yeah. A pile of crates with his own stud stone. Ah. Mm. I was supposed to be really weird, guys. I'm just going to have a look around. And he's going to go around the corner and just see Zolan stood mm. next to a group of crates about to explode. Just go, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on at the moment. Mm. As that happens, mm. what to do? As that happens, <laughs> I will have you all roll initiative, please. Oh. Okay. Uh oh. Told you I Jack. haven't done this for a long time, you have we? Fun, like, I, know. Flight music. Got the, uh, I know, I'm going to use them. We're going to introduce them as we go. One gun. So who feels they have the highest initiative going? That's a good roll, Thorin here. 22. 22. Uh, that is the highest initiative going. I just need to roll one more. Hmm. Oh, I forgot. Sticking great over here, by the way. <laughs> I'm just going to have a little... Potentially. Say 22. Um, Thorny, you're going to be represented by a lovely um, symbol of a paw with two daggers. Cool, like that. And this will track our initiative if I use it correctly. Kill dogs. Um, <laughs> 18. 18. We've got a lantrix. Can anyone beat an 18? We've got 18 going once, going twice. 18 is in there. Um, who thinks they're next? 15. 15. 
15, well done. We have Felix coming up. You remember your symbols, by the way, because I won't. Um, I should be introducing them as we um, go, really. 12. Well, yeah, they're mostly 11. the same as oh. the ones on the screen. Yeah. Oh, they're the same as the ones on the screen. That's even better. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. Uh, mostly, apart from thoroughness. So <laughs> um, who did we say was next? Zolan? 12, please. 12? 12. 12. 11. Uh, so we have a Zolan. We then have... Oh, uh, what I've oh, missed. Monsters, monsters yeah. initiative. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that's Malpin. That is. Turns on the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we have a Malpin. <laughs> and then it'd be great if I had another grey one, but I don't. Yeah, that so should be down there. So should they? Oh, Marvelous. I don't know which one I use. Take away Tupperware. It's ultimate nerd storage in Tupperware, isn't it? <clears throat> this one. And we'll leave it at that for now. So, what happens? Um, there is a cracking noise. A cracking noise as one of the crates begins to break open, like an egg. It snaps, and like snaps, it. and turns. <laughs> and you hear a much larger whirring noise now, a big mechanical clunking noise. What did I tell you? And out of this crate steps a five-foot-tall humanoid structure. Okay, uh, it's roughly five foot tall, but also roughly five foot broad. Um, it has, rather than a head, it kind of has grills um, across the top of it. Uh, and steam is pouring out the top of this um, device. Um, it has two little stumpy legs and two um, relatively strong looking gyroscopic arms, um, which has a um, hammered flat ball instead of hands. Um, it just vents steam and it looks directly at you, Zell. Um <laughs> I just go, oh, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> you probably recognise it. Yeah. It is a gnomish destruction goal. Destruct, Destructo 5000. Yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> um, it's the older model, though. They have a newer one than this. <laughs> <laughs> First up in the turn order, turn order we have Thorin here. Um, you're probably unaware of what's going on, other than you've heard a big cracking crate open. Well, I'm just going to shout, Solon, what the f*** is that? <laughs> Stop though, Golem. I haven't, I'm, not, I'm not fearful yet. I don't know what's going on with yet. Take it I'm assuming he's going to punch a building to pieces. Out its heart or whatever you do. <laughs> so you can, um, if you wanted to, if you want to do any more than that, you can take a move action, you can take an attack action, you can move and it? do a thing. Um, so you're stood in front of the stone building. All of this commotion is happening around the side of it. If you were to take a look around the stone building, you'd notice a relatively open, mudded um, courtyard uh, with a well in the middle, a pile of crates. This guy's popped out of one of those crates. Okay, well, I'm just going to get as close as I can with a sneaky peek around the corner. Peek around the corner. Yeah. Um, you've probably, you haven't got quite a mo enough movement to close them entirely, but you could get pretty close. It's up to you. Um, yeah, I'll just get as, as close as possible. Cool. So you probably fall about ten foot, sure. Um, and then you can take, you can use a spell, you could attack with a ranged weapon, you could leave it there if you want. I'm just going to kind of spy for a weakness, a possible weakness. Absolutely. So if you want to use your action to do a, let's say, an investigation check. You're becoming a pro now. I've dreamt Five. over these two years. <laughs> uh, <coughs> bum, bum, bum. It is 17. 17, well done, some high rolls. Um, so this construct, you don't really understand why this construct exists, um, obviously being based in nature. Uh, it's obviously burning something, it's got steam and heated water. Um, you're pretty sure if you could somehow uh, maybe disrupt its boiler mechanism somehow, that'd be a good way of taking it down. Um, also, if you doused it with a lot of water, perhaps, that might work if it couldn't overcome it. Okay. I'm just thinking, that don't look natural. That's human made of <laughs> sorts. It exactly. will have a weakness. Exactly. Like a little tiny thing, because hmm. all things crumble in the end, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Marvellous. Uh, so that's Thorne here, up to a Lamtrix. You're up next. Um, so we're, we're still slightly further away, aren't we? So can we. How far are we from it? You're probably, if you turn, if you include rallying the corner, you're probably just about 40 feet away. Okay, and Malkin's still next to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, holding not still actually. Okay. Um, I'll take my shield off off of my 
back mm-hmm. and the white kite shield with the very pale Simon <laughs> so pale. Very pale grey. <laughs> so Almost so pale you can't see it. Um, she looks across, she holds the shield up, um, she says a few words quietly under her breath. Um, she puts her hand out, touches Malcolm on the shoulder, and um, she casts resistance on Ooh. you, Cantrip. Oh. Um, so once before the spell ends, the target can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to one saving throw of its choice. Nice. Okay, so that's concentration at the moment. Um, and I'll take uh, a step ten feet toward yep. toward them all and just have the shield up. Just ten foot? You could do yeah. the whole, yeah, just ten foot. So you're just rallying the corner, basically. Yeah. So yeah. you're probably roughly thirty feet away from the, um, the device, as it were. Um, wonderful. Up to you, Felix. You're up. Cool. He's going to stand up on his hind legs, grab the sword with both hands, mm. swing it out. Zoran, you got to step back. It's dangerous. And he's going to close the gap. How far? Um, you're very close because you rallied the corner already, so you're probably only 10 feet away. Cool. He's going to close the gap, and um, I can't even remember if you can do this in D&D. But he's going to defend because he doesn't know if this thing is necessarily yeah, offensive. Yeah, absolutely. You can do that. Um, um, I don't remember the effect it is, but I remember that yeah. you can do it. Uh, I think it's called something like... It's one of the many actions. Yeah, one of the um, many actions. We don't have a cheat sheet with all this stuff. Maybe. Uh, I assume it gives some Here we go. Actions in combat. Yeah. You've got dodge. Yeah. Um, you want to do that one, do you? Yeah. Um, so, so until the start of your next turn, any attack roll made against you has disadvantage. Yeah, so he's got a sword across the front of him and he's prepared for any... So basically sort of counteract any attack on him. And dodge. Beautiful. Up to ah, you, Zolan. You're up. This big towering thing compared to you. Big he's, five foot tall creatures. He's gonna, he's gonna put it away. He's gonna pull his pipe out. He's gonna go. I haven't seen one of these in bloody years. <laughs> you know, wow. I haven't seen one of these in years. Just light his pipe and admire it. I still yeah. think this is no threat. So him, he's just a, he's just a construction that he's seen before. It's just a utility utility robot. He's just gonna turn up. He's not. Hasn't been programmed to fight me yet. He's thinking, bloody hell. Look at a craftsmanship. <laughs> wow! Wow! Smoke his pipe, that's it. Marvellous. Um, so you're roughly 10 feet away, you're going to stay where you are? Yeah, I might get closer. I might inspect it. And did you feel it's close the gap, did you say? Yeah, he's in, uh, model he's in close number. range. Um, so up to, uh, what did you call him, the Destructo 5000. <laughs> yeah. Destructo, over to Destructo 5000. Um, he obviously doesn't talk very well. It, there's obviously a load of pipe work in there that seems to make some kind of semblance of noise, and it strikes together mechanical words. Um, and all it says is, uh, you are not authorised to open the cage. Cease and desist. <laughs> and with that, it's going to take one of these pneumatic um, cannonball-shaped hands. Um, a piston's going to fire, and it's going to try and punch you very hard in the face. Felix. Come at me, bro. Um, so apologies for that. Um, does it apologise for it? It does apologise, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, does, it does apologise. Apologies, but you're not authorised. <laughs> Sorry about this. Uh, and that is a... Sorry, my dash roll is currently bugging. Let's go for that. Um, that's a 16. Uh, equals my AC. Uh, which is a failure. Matches equal or a success. succeed, I believe. Equal success. Or success. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Disadvantage, because he's got his dodge. Prepared. Oh, it is a disadvantage. I oh, apologize. Yeah, good point. You're very ready. Uh, which is better, sadly. Um, oh, no worries. So that is a hit. And that is going to do... Right on the nose. 95. <laughs> <laughs> Sailing over the house. Felix backwards. Hmm. That's the face of someone who's killed someone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Seven bludgeoning damage. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, no worries. So pounds him on the sword, and it's such a hard hit. And not yeah, he kind of he loses his footing. Sadly, he's going to go for you again. No worries. Put uh, a disadvantage. Um, he goes to fire again. Yeah. Um, he puts everything into it, so you hear the steam pressure building up. 
and it fires out, but as it does, he slips in the mud, <laughs> loses his footing. Um, he's actually kind of at half stance now. He's obviously not used to working on less than perfect terrain. Awesome. Um, he he is one, gonna. He rolled a one. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's half dug in the mud. Cool. He's gonna expend a superiority dice to counterattack. Ooh, go ahead. Yeah. So it goes bloop, and he, he just comes in for a swing. You. Uh, lovely. Uh, I've never done this before, so stand by. Uh, when a creature misses you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to expend one superiority dice to make a melee weapon attack against it. Add the superiority die to the attack's damage roll on hit. Nice. So let's see if we hit. Great sword. Ooh, it's only 11. Ooh, sadly, you, you go in with that great sword, you yep. just feel a tink, um, it just bounces straight off this, the big drum-like structure. No worries. He's, it's like he's made of stone. Uh, Malkin, you're up. Right, so how far away is all of this commotion? Roughly 40 feet away. You have a knot currently yeah. being carried. Um, and it's roughly 40 feet away. It's around a corner, 10 foot, and then 30 foot straight down. Right, the okay. So I've got a hold of knot. I'm going to... Stay there. Let go of him. Almost throwing him down to the ground. You can easily push him over. He's very and, slight. And I'm going to run full tilt. Round the corner, I've got 40 feet. Nice, you can easily So that. I'm going to run straight into, taking um, stock of it as I run towards it, straight into combat, pull my staff out of the, the strap on my back and swing it on the upswing at this beautiful this clanking thing that's attacking my comrades. Yeah. Wallop. Make me a lovely attack roll. I only accept lovely uh, rolls. Um, you can do it at advantage because this guy is half dead in the mud. Right. Uh, hang on. Uh, that's four. Uh, plus. What have I got there? Uh, plus nine. Wrong about that. Plus nine? No, nine. no, plus five. That's Ooh, not. I was going to say, nine. holy, <laughs> holy <laughs> moly! And that's a 13, so that's, uh, that's 18. That is a hit. Um, so, yeah, you get this big thwunk up and over. Whack. And damage. that is. Three uh, bludgeoning damage, I assume, from yeah, my staff. Bad. And as I can do this now, um, when mm -hmm. I when I ever I take an attack action, I can then take another one. Oh, I forgot to ah, do that. <laughs> can you do, do, it with your do I have to? <laughs> yeah, I can take. <coughs> do I have to maybe. roll to hit again? Yes. Right. Yeah, you will have to. Okay. Oh, it makes still with advantage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's still digging the mud. So. Twelve. Oh, that's cocked. 15, yeah, that's 20. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's that's another five. Oh, nice. Bang! Five Bang! Damage. On Wonderful. this thing. And a D8 well. um, D8. You've given a couple of whacks. Um, you don't even know if this thing's noticed, right? Um, it's a couple oh, of it's dumps. noticed. It's almost like hitting an oil drum with a staff. You know, it makes some really impressive noise. Um, but, yeah. Wonderful. Um, you hear some shuffling about. Uh, and some shuffling around back from the oh. whence you came. And the Lantrix, you actually see this not um, s kind of sidles up close to you, quite uncomfortably close to you, shall we say, um, and sees this thing. And as that happens, um, he raises one of his hands uh, and. If this thing catches up with me, which I'm sure it will. Um, you, see one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see one of his hands come up, uh, and there's kind of like a black energy that kind of appears um, within one of his hands. Um, and he hurtles this thing, uh, but it just flies skyward, like almost as if it's just been lobbed. Um, that happens again with his other hand. He comes in with the other hand um, and does way better that time. Uh, manages to get this thing straight at... Um, this mechanical creature, uh, but the mechanical creature, this this kind of shot is absorbed by it somehow. It doesn't seem to seems to um, not be particularly bothered by it. Um, if that makes sense. Are the gnomes watching at the moment? Uh, you don't know. You can hear panicked voices that are getting increasingly higher pitch as this goes on, um, but you're not entirely sure where they are. Okay. That's a very good question. 
it's you. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we're on the I'm top just, of the turn order. I'm just so okay. used to being told it's <laughs> <laughs> my turn. Um, and I'm just going to use my um, D&D around the table bonus action to just remind myself what you said last time when I had a wonderful insight roll. Cool, so you um, you noticed that this creature was being powered by some kind of boiler. Um, there's a couple of ways you could overcome that. If you were to damage that boiler in some way, it would probably no longer be able to keep pressure and would, would cease to function. Um, equally, um, if you were to douse the heating mechanism in water, you think that would probably be particularly damaging. Um, it's also a clockwork device, so anything you can think of there would probably be useful. Well, I'm going to go with Thornia's guts here, not... Carl's gut. <laughs> <laughs> and what he's going to do is... That wouldn't work. He's going to go with Carl's gut. <laughs> and he's going to do a little short bow into nice. where he thinks the weak point is. Cool. He wants to puncture it. Yeah, go make ahead. It, make it fail. You can make an attack roll. It is at advantage at the moment because he's stuck in the murder and you've got honed sensors. You know what you're in. It's a natural 20. Woo! Oh, Our first crit of the it? campaign. Well done. Um, so you automatically do maximum damage on your rolled dice. That is. Some amount. Eight! So it's eight, <laughs> plenty will be plus eight your. Of piercing. Plus your dexterity. Oh, well, that's going to make it go up. Ten. Ooh, nice. Um, you, this thing hits home, so you aim exactly where you want it to go. I can write this any better. Um, you've been <laughs> studying exactly where you think the boiler pot is, and somewhere within its chest there's this big round drum. Um, you manage to get just through some kind of pleated armour. This thing was made for knocking buildings down. It's not really a combat-oriented thing, so it's not really heavily armoured. Um, it goes right underneath, and you just hear this, and you hear this kind of, gushing steam sound as this billowing kind of steam cloud comes up from his chest. Well done. Um, do you have anything? You've got a little bit of a move action. You can move somewhere. Because you're quite close to this thing, aren't you? So you can move away or you could... I'm just going to crouch into the grass. Yeah. I can pretty much camouflage in any foliage. It's probably mostly mud where you are because it's been heavily walked on. Any any foliage. Do a pee in my lock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> mud is like foliage, right? Yeah. <laughs> roll pro you roll yourself <laughs> on the ground <laughs> and hope you ain't seen. Predator yeah. style. Yeah. In which case, um, if it steams, we can kill it. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. well, you're you're mud up in the hope that he won't see. Yeah. Yeah. Much. I like that. Um, Alantrix, you're up. I'm going to because. Uh, Nort's right next to me, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to grapple him. Nice. Yeah? Yeah. Does he resist? Absolutely not. Mate, I'm going to grapple him. Yeah. Um, and shout at him, you magic user! <laughs> and grapple him as yeah. hard as I can and intentionally try and walk him out towards gnomes and say, we have a magic user! Well done. Well out done. to the centre of... I'm going to make sure all of you can hear me as well. Um, sure, yeah. Into the centre of the the most obvious place I could possibly be. So I'm, the most obvious place will be where Destructo Five Thousand is. So sure, yeah. Somewhere I'll be, around that. I'm thirty foot away already, but I, just, I don't want to be sheltered by a building. I want to in give myself a maximum chance for gnomes to see me. In the courtyard. Okay. You, that, you notice a distinct lack of gnomish chatter happening. Sure. Um, whether that's your desired effect or not, you don't know. But something is happening. Sure thing. Yeah. Um, and I am, um, yeah, I guess I've grappled, which so is kind of my action, action isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Felix, cheer up. There's this half-crouched um, creature in front of you. Yep, he's going to do what he does best, which is whang his sword at it. Yeah. Yeah, with advantage, because it's in the mud. It is. You whang, get whang. Thank you very much. Oh, be better. Why are you not better? Uh, that's you 14 to hit. That's a hit. Well, I'll take it. I might get yeah, 20. Oh, I might get a 20. 20. You want to roll it? Oh, it's 24 to hit. That'll do. Uh, awesome. Apologies, this is all new to me. You go ahead. He's going to do... We're surrounded by friends. <laughs> uh, that is 3 plus 3, so he's going to do 6 oh, slashing damage. Nice. Come back with that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's going to finally bring the sword up high and bring it down uh, on this... Uh, 
on this big metallic monster, hopefully a big tang, maybe make a big dent. Um, and then from that, as the sword bounces up, he'll jump up and bring it down again for his second attack. Marvellous. It's a one. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> advantage. advantage, yay! It's not great, it's a ten. Uh, yeah, so the second the you jump up in the air, you go for the second strike, but it just doesn't quite make it to the armor. It probably bounces off it. Why is this through. thing so hard? Uh, Zolan, you're up. He's terribly disappointed. He's going to pull the pipe out and go, Have we have we unlocked the, the lock box? Whatever it's called. The cage. Have we unlocked the cage? Anybody? Might have done. I'm deep in combat, Zolan. <laughs> <sighs> he's going to just... He's just going to walk off with... <laughs> With, that, with, with one hand in the pipe, Zolan's like this, back. And, and yeah. again, he's just going to go. The, the bit we see of him. He's just again. He's just not even. Gonna, he, for some reason, doesn't think this thing's going to attack him. He's just. It's quite unheard of in the zone, but then to go rogue and start attacking people, he's just every time and he's going to walk off in the last direction he'd seen the gnomes to be like shut this bloody thing off come on so he's going to walk off he's so smoking his pipe they're definitely in one of the buildings um, are they you could use your action do an investigation check so you yeah, can attack yeah, so, yeah for good he's thinking every bloody time yeah so if you roll an investigation for me every time uh, it's 18. 18. So even under the commotion, there's a lot of commotion going on. Uh, the building that's opposite the one that you went into is the other side of the courtyard. Yeah. So you will have to walk round the commotion. That's um, fine. There's some kind of hushed conversation now. They were talking quite loudly before, whereas now there's definitely some kind of hushed conversation. Yeah. You hear little, see little peeps out the door, and they're peeping towards a Lantrix, who Ooh. seems to have um, not grappled. Yeah. It's yeah, so he's that. Head that just, way. Yeah, head that way. He's just, just, disappointment because we've seen the fellow or something. He's like, why? Every time. <laughs> it's like don't press the red button. <laughs> Every time, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just about get there, but you only have so roughly doing that. <laughs> <laughs> doing that the whole way around. Yeah. Yeah. Every on, time. Button. button. Yeah. Don't you press. Got, <laughs> you only got roughly six seconds to say that. Yeah. Elapses by the time you manage to have a conversation. <laughs> Um, this thing still, uh, even though it's billowing steam out of its side now, um, it's still very much in the fight. It managed to just get one of its legs out <laughs> of the mud. That was probably a horrible sound, I apologise. <laughs> and sticks one of its legs out of the mud. Um, it notices that you're very close and Malcolm's very close. It doesn't seem to know what to do, but it is scanning around. It's obviously looking for whatever's come out of that cage. Um, doesn't see what it should be looking at and is very confused at what's going over there. Um, so it's going to attempt to slam one of these fists into you, um, Felix. Uh, I'm looking for my dice and I don't have any because I'm rolling digitally. Uh, and I will... Don't give him that one. So right. Right. Oh, oh no, that one's, one's very good. That's a good dice, yeah. But thank you. Uh, that's a 14 to hit. Continue to show. That misses. That misses. Um, so he will use his reaction to counterattack. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I get to roll a superiority yeah. there. Eight. Oh, oh, nice. It's the big one. And he gets, he gets two counterattacks. Oh, yay. Big numbers. 24 to hit. Uh, 24 to hit is, is definitely it. 3, 4, uh, 7, 10 slashing damage. Nice. Oh, plus eight. 18 slashing damage. Wow, there That's we eight. go. One big cross hit. No! <laughs> Down. And another, and another yeah, he, he gets yeah. another one. Like, I'm just waiting for Ollie to go. And he explodes before yeah. I attack again. Awesome. Stay down. 20 to hit. With advantage. Uh, isn't sorry, it? that is oh, a. Sorry, yeah. uh, that is it. Yep. Sweet. I still got my uh, eight. Uh, why am I rolling that dice, you idiot? <laughs> Three and a six. And that is twelve plus eight twenty slashing damage. Nice. Slashy, well done. Slash, slash. It's yeah. quite extreme. Again, he's going to go for that. Uh, he, yeah, he's cross slashed. He's going to bring the sword up and he's going to jump and bring it back down on this creature. Yeah. All twenty-five kilos of big great sword. Beautiful. Uh, Dus. As you do that, you <laughs> notice um, that you probably pinned a few holes in this kind of boiler that's mostly yeah. within its cab chest cavity, and you see more billowing bits of steam coming from Nick's here and there. Um, it's getting quite hot to stand near this thing. Um, it's starting to feel like you're in a bit of a sauna, depending on how you feel about that. Um, as that happens, he's going to turn around and look at Malkin, um, and uh, one of these piston arms is going to go off towards your direction. Uh, and he is going to try and attack you. 
What was it? Um, that's only a nine. Saving throws. So it's yeah. against your uh, AC, but it's only a nine. No. Wonderful. Um, so this thing <clears> fires <throat> off, but it just goes way over your head. You can easily dodge out of the way. Only at one reaction per round, right? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Malkin, that's you. Right. So I'm switching from my one-handed running and pulling out grip to my two-handed swing. Mm-hmm. And I, again with my staff, I'm going to slam it down. Only this time I'm sort of aiming for the, the boiler. Cool. So I, I've, I've sort of identified that this is all steam-powered, so I'll give it a good solid whack with my staff. Bash on the, the, the boiler part of it. Marvellous. Give it a good go. So, here we go. That is 9, that is 14 to hit. That's a hit. It's a hit. Excellent. Right, I'm going to use the right dice this time. Uh, one d8 because I'm doing it two-handed. Oh, and bless you. D8. There we go. Oh, that's only a one plus three. Unlucky. That's four damage. That's four. Four bludgeoning damage, and I've got second hit. Love it, do. Oh dear, that's not so good. That's nine. It's a miss, I'm afraid. Damn it. Can you rewrite history and remove my second set of damage, please? Because I've just read the rules. I'm still understanding this character. I would not have got to make my second attack. Oh, bless you. That's fine. I did figure that was the case, but yeah. I didn't want to, um, to chime in at that, that period of time. I don't want to ruin <laughs> the game. Wizard of the Coast worked very hard on this. Because you had the honesty to tell me, the yeah. damage stands. Oh, right. thank you. Um, inspiration. <laughs> I'll take <laughs> that, the damage. That does so remind me, Harvey. Zolan, you do get inspiration, by the way. So feel free to take <laughs> inspiration for your heroic I've efforts got one, right? of avoiding... Am I? Oh. Yeah. Ah, for the cupboard. For the cupboard <laughs> technique. But yeah, yeah, you double up on inspiration. You can't um, stack which oh, well, you which can't stack unless you want yeah, to be able to You can't stack them, you just get one inspiration. I mean, which cupboard was this? I'm in the cupboard a lot. <laughs> that was in the first or second, second. episode? Yeah. Second yeah. episode, yeah. you yeah. spent some time in the cupboard. Cool. Um, yeah. No other character would get inspiration for spending time in a cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it goes over to Not. Not um, isn't resisting. Um, he will attempt to leave your grasp, but if you deny that, he'll stay where he is. Yeah, she'll pinch his arm, stay where you are. Oh, cool. Are you trying to give him some kind of message? Like, he's trying to infer that he should play along? Uh, yeah. Cool. Can you make a performance check? Morse code and pinches. Can you imagine yeah. that? <laughs> trying to decode it in pain. Uh, 15. Yeah. <laughs> 15. He, um, he goes... He, you notice, as that happens, he's a very weak individual, but you notice that he is... All of a sudden, getting what you're trying to do puts up a fake, um, almost wrestle, uh, but he doesn't seem to be resisting you in any way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thorin here, you're up. Dear, I misread the situation. I thought you had the attacko bot, yeah. and you were going, Magic user! <laughs> <laughs> like, Why is it punching the dog? <laughs> <laughs> God, <I know>. Apologies, that's <laughs> probably, probably my explanation. <laughs> I've got not. Yeah. You've not got not. <laughs> no, he has got not. He has got not. Yeah. Um, so, can I check things before I do an action, or is a check an action? You've only got six seconds, so really, if you check it, unless it's something that's very quick that you can just get information about, like okay, what well, very quickly? Okay. Because I'm kind of hidden anyway. Yes. What you're going to hear is like, well, you're going to see my arm come up. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. And you, you remember the, the crackly noise from my mouth from a few episodes ago when, mm. I, when I, what I do, I created a bonfire or I made a little yes. thing. Just well, remind us. I haven't got my tools. There was a Maltese there. There was a Maltese there. And, uh, the humour there, this is Jack's favourite gaming table. Um, My only gaming table. His game. only gaming table, and it's lovely, and we've just got crushed Maltese over the vast majority of the table. Like, you know, All in the name of the game, Jack. Yeah, the difficulties. Well, yeah. Yeah. Six seconds up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get the dustpan and brush. Um, well, it was very much like that, but yeah. a lot more intense. A lot Maltese. more Maltese. This time, Maltese. Thorne is not just lighting a little mm. campfire. But he's creating a bonfire. Mm. Um, and so basically, <laughs> he can throw 
a little bonfire. Yeah. It's a 15 foot cube wall. Before he does this, he's just going to quickly ask, is anyone within 15 feet? Yes. Yep. Oh, of you currently or of the... No, of the... Yes. The mm-hmm. Yeah. Both right Malkin and Felix. Yeah. Then he's going to... And at least one of them looks very, very flammable. quickly <laughs> recall. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's going to come back in and it's going to come out as a uh, short bow attack. <laughs> 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 How do you manifest that? So that, that is basically all, all the, the sparks start to come in. Oh, they, so they sort of missed that. Kind of, yeah, the, the mud boils a little bit and it just comes out like Arnie. <laughs> and a dustpan brush. <laughs> and he does a 21. 21, wow, that's not, an, it won't be a natural, but um, yeah, that's definitely a hit. But doink. Four. Three. A rather muddy twang. <laughs> Six. Awesome. Well done. Uh, on to Elantrix. You're currently grappling a knot. So I'm still grappling him, and I'm walking closer to the where the names are, so they can definitely see and hear me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know where the Ark of Zolan's pointing the way. Sure. Mm. Very well. Mumbling to himself. <laughs> yes, he's going, you should know better, Ooh. Elantrix. <laughs> yeah. um, um, and he's going to shout. And he's going to shout direct. She's going to shout directly to them. Um, Can't you turn this thing off? It's gone mad. I've got him. Go on. Um, can you roll me an intimidation check, please? I won't use it as your action, so you can still do an action if you so wish. Not good. Uh, three. Three. Um, they're terrified. Um, they're scared of you, but they're equally scared of what the hell is going on. Yeah. You've got something in your grasp, and they don't have a clue what's going on. Um, so they are, they are shouting at each other at this point, but you can't make out what they're saying. Can I give them my advantage? Mm. Yes, you can, can. I do that? Can you I give, give, I'm give you that advantage, Jeff, yeah. to uh, rate that roll? So the brave. Uh, ten. Ten. Oh, yeah. Um, as you do that, um, you have uh, Friedrich, um, who looks at you, um, looks at the Destructo 5000, mm. um, and really thinks about what you should be doing. He's not entirely <laughs> sure what you should be doing. Um, but you're pretty sure at some point in the near future he will try his best to do what you've said. Um, but in order to do that, I'm going to have to do this. Uh, and that would be... Oh, good lord. Oh, oh he's fast. Um, that would be me at the moment. Marvellous. You can still take an action because you're not technically grappling, so you can have an action if you want. Um, if you were grappling, that would be your action, but sadly, yeah, not is not. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, no, that's all she's going to do then. Cool. She's going to just, she's just there. I'll take the dodge action, just why not. Cool, yeah, yeah. sounds good. You um, hide behind not. <laughs> uh, Felix, you're up. No. Am I? Already? Already. <laughs> it's these open? little tokens. Just open a new bit. We're pacing right. through. Cool. Um, you well, can't see them, but they are beautiful. He's going to do what he does best. And smash things. Yeah, you, yeah. you go ahead. Cool. Is it still with advantage or not? It's not. No. It's 18 to hit. <laughs> 18 to hit. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a hit. Nice. Uh, 6 plus 4, 10 plus 3, 13 damage. Wow. Big sword. <laughs> oh, he's going to go for the legs. You can go for the legs. Yeah, it yeah. just tang into them, but you lose a significant notch as you go through. Lovely. And steam's billowing out of there. Do his second attack. To name my first album, significant notch. Significant <laughs> notch. Nineteen plus six, twenty-five to hit. <laughs> Definitely gonna hit. That was a significant notch. Eight plus three, eleven damage. Mm. Nice. This one's across. Yeah, it's still going. Yeah. It's steaming, but it's still going. It's getting very hot to stand near it, because there's a lot of steam everywhere. But, um, but it's still going. Should I read into that? <laughs> um, you may if you wish. <laughs> it's getting really hot. <laughs> You're <Yeah>. panting. <laughs> Keep smashing it. 
only you had sweat glands. Yeah, I know. It's all, it's all like that. He is actually, like, for the first time, he looks like a really happy dog. Like, yeah. you can see the white teeth, the tongue's hanging out the side, <laughs> um, the hair's kind of all over the place, and he's doing what he loves. Quite is, he, is he armoured? Uh, he. That's a good question, I'll explain later. Okay. Um, Just a loin. Marvellous. On to Zoli. Yep. Oh, I'm going to look to Landrix and just be mouthing. You should know better. You should know better than this. <laughs> Oh. I, I, have I noticed that um, Friedrich's leaving the building? I've come to do a very similar thing. If I if, he's, if I can see he's getting ready for action, I would be turning around. Yeah, as you look at him, he's patting himself down. He looks like he's looking for his keys. Oh, there's a huge key. Yeah, so he's... Um, I'm going to say, what are you looking for? Yeah, he's like, I need, I need the, um, the, the, the device, you know, the, the, the thing, the, 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 the thing. Would I know the thing? I would, have, am I, would I be familiar probably with probably what the thing is? I'm going to help so. investigate then. If I've got if I've got time to investigate, I'm going to help investigate looking for the thing. Yeah, you go ahead. Do you roll an investigation check? Uh, 18. 18, well done. Um, all of the uh, Destructo 5000s, if yeah. you will, um, have a uh, deactivation key. Yeah. It basically just vents the boiler. Cool. Um, basically, there is a tap on its back. And you insert the key into the tap, you turn it, and it will vent the boiler. Um, he obviously has it on his person, yeah. and he's panicking, and you can't see it. It's just hung from his belt. Ah, oh, okay. Um, so it, it's a big rectangular-shaped key. Um, if you imagine a radiator key, yeah. it looks very similar. Nice. Uh, but larger. <laughs> <than maybe. laughs> They've got a square end on a square exactly. tap on it as yeah, well. Yeah, nice. that kind of thing. Um, you could probably... I know you've taken your action to escape. I'm happy for you to grab it. Um, no, I th he's... I, he can deal with this, cool. to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to put it, if anything, I'll point out, it's on the belt, mate. Yeah. It's on the belt, mate. He sees that, and you probably saved him a few seconds of time. That's fine. So, that's Get him to the land tricks. Yeah, he grabs it. Yeah. Um, you've that's still got a move cool. action, if you want to move at all. No. No? No. Stay pretty where yeah. you are. Lovely. Um, this thing's still going, um, and I'm going to need both of you guys to make me a dexterity saving throw, please. I'm pretty quick, so it could be fine. <laughs> Yes. You've got so you've got plus twenty one. Thirteen. You've got plus whatever plus, I gave you. Plus D four? Yeah. Plus D four. You've got an extra D four. If, oh, you, plus if D4. you want to use it. Because you are blessed in some way by some god we're not allowed to talk about. Yeah. Do I need it? Yeah. Once four is balanced, uh, target roll D four at the end of the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I can roll the die before or after making the save. You get magic. You get magic. You get magic. That'd be freaking amazing. Yeah. That's just one. <laughs> so just that makes one. fifteen. Fifteen. Okie dokie. Um, that is a pass. <laughs> was fourteen a fail? It was. Oh, 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 oh. However, I'm going to need you oh. both to take. A measly four damage, okay. um, fire damage. Um, it's safe fire, it's actually steam. So basically yeah. steam vents out in a cloud, um, billowing steam out, um, and it just scolds you. Ever so blindly. Yeah, it makes his hair really curly. Yeah. You imagine that would have ended, <laughs> that would have ended much worse. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, as that happens, he well. is also going to... Let's have a little look what we can do. Um, yeah, so as this is happening, it's, it's obvious the tide is turning on this creature. He's vented a load of steam. Um, and you just hear a load of mechanical locks and pops go down. And as that happens, um, two other arms appear from underneath its carapace, both of which have saw blades attached to them. Um, <laughs> And uh, he's going to use all of his appendages, uh, and he is going to, and I'll do this rapid succession, um, because my dice roller likes to take its time. Looks like he's been retrofitted with the 16,000 upgrades. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh -oh. you didn't tell us. Um, so Malcolm, I'm afraid there's a non-natural 20 coming your way. Ooh, that will hit. Cool. There is also a... 16. Or damage, or? Dam no, 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 not damage. 16. 16. So that's two yeah. hits. Um, so. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can use my reaction to make an attack against him because he attacked. Awesome. Which will come in. 
it comes in after damage, doesn't it? Okay. So you damage first. Yeah. Cool. Um, sadly, that is basically what he's doing is one of these pistons is going off, you get hit by a cannonball. At the same time, he's bringing an arm round, the saw blade's just going to come straight across. Yeah. And he does 16 damage. It's a mixture of bludgeoning and um, <laughs> slashing. Yeah. I'm down. Are you down? He's down. Oh. Are you well, really fell down? Move. 16 damage. Yeah, yeah what's your, your, we have, we've just had a long rest, so HP will be back to full. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't, you got, you got... He has a minus one constitution. You've got 21 HP though, haven't you? <laughs> Mark and lives on the edge. Uh, HP, yeah, but I've already done, so that's, did you say 16? 16. I've got one left. Hey, hey, there you go. That's yeah. all you need. Cool, uh, can I make that reaction well. attack? Oh, of course Bottom. you can. Yeah. You'll hope like this hits. Technically, that's two. Oh, you only get one reaction, but that's that is two attacks. Uno, I'm that's afraid. A, it's an Uno. It's a miss. Oh, apologies. So that's, slash, that's slashing and bludgeoning damage, wasn't it? Slashing and bludgeoning damage. Mm-hmm. So we are. So that would have been two attacks. You only get one. Yeah, I only get one reaction. Um, just in case I'm stealing an, yeah, yeah. an action from. Um, I'm going to roll two for yourself because you can't take a reaction now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to roll two just so we get the ball rolling. Uh, they are. Sadly, both 19s. Okay. Um, and I will do the same roll as I did before. Um, that is a 13 damage. Cool. It's a mixture of bludgeoning and sword blazes. The same thing happens. He's basically attacking you both at the same time. Um, he's venting a hell of a lot of steam now. He's obviously working that boiler as hard as it can go, and he's losing water. Uh, and that is Malkin. You up? Right. So first off, I'm going to um, attack. Same as before, with my staff. Okay. Two head, two-handed strike. The first attack is uh, eleven. Uh, that's hit. a miss, I'm afraid. Right, and then the second attack is fifteen to hit. Uh, that's a hit. Right, so that's a D8. That is six plus three. That's nine bludgeoning damage. Good solid whack, and as a bonus action, Ooh. I'm going to spend one key mm-hmm. to make a disengage action. Nice, cool. because I am <laughs> I've got one point of damage left, <laughs> so I am going to key. spend a key to step of the wind. Nice, and make a disengage. Um, <clears throat> My jump distance du- yeah. is doubled, so... So basically that means you can now move and he can't hit you for anything. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to move um, 20 feet. Awesome. Where are you, where are you going to head to? Um, There's some away. kind of commotion, <laughs> commotion going on with gnomes and Elantrix and not and Zolin. I'm going to, some other going to head buildings. towards Elantrix. Cool. Yeah, In that, that direction. Yeah. Just and maxing. As, as, a, as a 50-50 choice. I, Marvellous. Okay. Sounds good. Well done. Um, Not is still pretending to put up a fight. Um, he's momentarily going to think about helping out, um, but I don't think there's much he can do um, that will help in this scenario. Uh, he, You guys will see this, but nobody else will. Um, the little radio key that's around the um, gnome's belt mm. seems to slide from a hook. And as that happens, it darts away from him um, and travels over towards Felix. Ooh. Um, this key, you notice it come towards you only just in time. Can you make me a dexterity saving throw, please? Let's have it. I'm rolling your deep. Let's have it. Uh, it's 15 plus 3, 18. Marvellous, you catch it. So you catch this key in the mouth, mouth, obviously. Um, who knows mouth. if you know what to do oh, with it? Must be in the mouth, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, who knows if you know what to do with it? But yeah. you, you catch it. Yeah. Nice. Um, Sorry. Sorry. Of course, it was in the mouth. Got to be. You don't know whether anyone has seen that action or not. It's one of those ones that did a backflip and then catch it real high. But funnily enough, as that happens, um, Friedrich goes to where he knew the key was. It's no longer there and starts patting himself down again um, and starts panicking. Um, but he starts wandering out into the mud, desperate to help. Um, kind of, He falls over, prostrate in the mud and gets up and he's covered in mud. <laughs> and he's still looking for this key, but he wanders over to this big steaming um, 
creation and gets up to base with it and realises that he can't do anything and panics pulls out his mason's hammer and just starts wailing on the thing um, <laughs> as hard as he can uh, as <laughs> see a bit of myself in that fellow <laughs> yeah he's, he's going for it best he can he's going to die <laughs> at the um, <laughs> and manages, manages to hit it <laughs> does very little damage um, you can hear it going ting 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 <laughs> um, but as that happens uh, you hear the clanking mechanisms whirring and this big gargantuan kind of golem of a creature pivots 180 degrees turning its back on Felix and stares down at this tiny gnome who drops his hammer in surprise. Um, but you do see, while he's turning his back to you, this triangular-shaped hole um, in its back. Nice. Uh, up to Thorinir, you're up. Do I see his back? You do. Yeah, his back's roughly, he's roughly turned to with its back to you now, because you're on a similar side to feel it. Okay. How far away am I? Uh, I think you were about 10 feet last time I checked. Yeah, I'm going to retreat. A little bit. Yeah. Sensing this thing looks unstable. Yes. Um, so yeah, as far as I can go with an action still. Yeah. Um, and I'm just gonna short bow it again. Nice. Go ahead. But I'm aiming now for the back. Aiming for the back. <laughs> cool. Are you aiming for specifically where this key slot is, or just yes. in general? Yeah. <laughs> you just, he's cocky now. Yeah. He's, it's been a few years since he's fired this thing, and he's nice. he's got him dead on each time. But he might shout run if he can. Love it. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. But then, he did a one. <laughs> <laughs> um, you managed to uh, fire this arrow, sailing through the air. You managed to get the hole, um, but it doesn't seem to do any damage. It just seems the arrow is kind of wedged in there. I was worried that was going to happen. Yeah, I was, I was, I was thinking. Yeah, so it just, just yeah. seems to be wedged. Um, <laughs> Alantric, you're up. She's going to turn to the ro the robot. Yeah, <laughs> the robot. She's got the robot. Uh, the robot. The robot. It's a creature, I assume. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she is going to cast command Ooh. and speak a single word toward it. Nice. Um, can you make a uh, wisdom save, please. I would love to. What's the word, Jack? I'll tell you in a sec. Okay. <laughs> what, uh, what am I rolling at? Uh, wisdom, <laughs> wisdom spell save. Uh, what's your DC? Do you know? 12. Uh, he's failed. Okay. Off. <laughs> nice. Um... He's obviously heard you. Um, you're not sure. In Gnomish, I In Gnomish, yeah. yeah. Um, he's obviously heard you because he just momentarily turns over and Friedrich is visibly sweating, not just because of the steam, um, but he turns over towards you as if to acknowledge you. Um, but Felix, you're up first, unless you're going to do a move action. Um, she'll just move a little bit closer to the house full of gnomes with this creature grappled. Yeah. Still shield. Felix, you're up. As things turn its back on you, there's an arrow wedged where the key should be. Yeah. Um, okay. And there's, a, there's like steam everywhere. Steam everywhere. Yeah. He's super everywhere. curly. Yeah. Uh, he's panting because yeah. he's an incredibly hot, two foot tall dog, long five foot sword, you know, partly on the ground, two paws holding onto it. And he just spits the key out onto the ground. He's like, Oh, enough of this. He has no idea what that thing is. <laughs> <laughs> and he sees the key slot yeah. in front of him. He's going to swing his sword and kind of clear the mist around mm. him um, as his uh, second wind. Nice. This is not a 10. I can never know which one's the D10. That's a 10. So. 5. 5 plus 5. So plus 10 health. Lovely. We'll take that. Um, and then he's going to uh, try and smash a five foot great sword into the key slot. He's just going to slot it in there. Uh, oh, it's a swing and then, yeah, throw him with inertia. Awesome. Get ahead. Ooh. That's cocked. No, not a lot. Three plus six to hit. It's, it's a very nice. specific thing you're going for, right? Yeah. So it manages to hit him, but he's just clanging off various milk. Second attack. 
Nine plus six, 15 to hit. 15 hits. Nice. Uh, and then he's going to do some slashy damage. Well, some proby damage. <laughs> uh, that is uh, eight plus three, uh, 11 damage. Plus, mm-hmm. is that enough? Plus, he's going to spend those superiority dice to add a bit extra on. Uh, that was the 10, wasn't it? Not good with my dice. Plus 6. So 11 plus 6, 17 damage. That's in total, yeah? Yeah, it's a big old swing. Marvellous. Um, you manage to slide this great sword, the, the keyhole gives way. Yeah. And this great sword goes straight in, right up to the hilt. Um, well, probably not because he's only 5 foot tall, but. Up to a foot away from the hill, yeah. um, and uh, you get steam billowing out. But you're relatively dexterous; you can move out of the way. It's not yeah. venting it towards you. Um, steam is billowing out of this thing. So um, the, the the tongue is like <laughs> in the steam wind. Yeah. You're imagining <laughs> he's not long for this world. Yeah. Um, so then you're up. Ah, uh, it all looks like it's going wrong. So I'm going to reach into my backpack and pull out one of my constructs. Nice. It's not a construct, really. It's one of his, one of his uh, creations over his two years of sleep. Yeah. And it's just a gauntlet he's made. It's like a little weird, it's a bit of a weird gauntlet. It's okay. a bit comical, a bit over large with, this, yeah. with the scissor action. You remember the old, uh, yeah. what do call that? When they would, something yeah. extends and it goes, whoop. Oh, yeah. Oh, got like, whip, um, you know, whip, like scissor. Like, like, yeah, like gadget. Yeah, like a gadget thing, yeah. Extend I'm assuming the there's like a reasonably sized stone around yeah. on the floor, something sure. like that, and it extends. And pulls a stone in, yeah. and then using a very similar motion, I guess, to the punching thing, it fires this stone at, <laughs> almost catapults it, as you will, nice. back at this construct. And it is a dex 14 for saving throw. Uh, certainly. If you could, please. Could I have done that four turns um, ago. Believe, <laughs> believe it or not, this thing isn't particularly dexterous. <clears throat> uh, that is a, it's definitely a hit. Okay. Cool. That thing. That's 3d8, 3, 4, wow. plus 6, 10 damage. Can you explain how you destroy <laughs> I do not believe this. MVP. Hero. MVP, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, MVP, yes. <laughs> of course, of course, yeah. What did you call me? The Great Zolan. It's just, it comes in just like a missile. Like, you've got to be careful because it's coming straight through this thing. He's like, it's like yeah. he's ground. I know he's it's, sword it's already been damaged. It probably hits one of those pierced points and it's just yeah. enough like a 50 cali- caliber bullet to <laughs> have a quite a small exit wound just explodes out of the back just, so yeah I don't want to hit you I'm sorry that's cool he loves that's it. it yeah brilliant he's, he's thought actually I have a hero he's gone what the can you make me a dex save of course please. he's very dexterous Whoop. Be dexterous. Four, uh, four turns. Malcolm is has got one point of damage 14. there. He's propping himself up on his staff, and he's just yeah. just looking at the, uh, uh, this huge steam cloud <laughs> erupts. Um, it absolutely erupts from this exit wound, and you get billows everywhere. Um, you manage to jump back five feet, and you completely avoid it. Nice. Um, however, Friedrich, our gnome, is engulfed <gasps> oh, in this steam <laughs> steaming flame. His beard's um, gone curly. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see his face anymore. Like mine. <laughs> um, when the steam finally settles, and um, there's like just a kind of a pair of legs and a jagged... Um, no, sorry. A <laughs> no! A pair of metal legs. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my <laughs> lord! <laughs> oh, if there were children watching. Uh, a pair of metal legs and this jagged kind of boiler construction. Yeah. Bits and pipes and cogs and various things around. Um, there is a gnome lying... Um, in the mud, oh um, very <laughs> slightly moving, um, but definitely reddened in the face uh, and soggy. Um, congratulations, you oh. survived your first first encounter. Yeah, first just. encounter of season two. Malkin is just <laughs> going to collapse onto the floor. Just, <laughs> just poof, that's it. Done. <laughs> um, in your mind, Elantrix, you'll hear the voice of Not, um, and uh, you'll just say, um, "I'm n- n- not sure how how long we're supposed to keep this up for." And are there name, how close are the names to us? Right next to you. Okay, I'll um, 
no easy way of responding because <laughs> it requires the casting of a spell. Which <laughs> shouldn't be done right now. So Felix is still fighting the. Uh, <laughs> the, the he's dropped his sword now because he's tired and he's just like. <laughs> and he's like punching with his, his little paws. He's like kicking it. He's just like, we got you. We got you. We're so good. Yes. <laughs> ting, 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 ting. Marvelous. Is Friedrich alright? Is Friedrich alright? The poor. I'm. I just get. Sorry, Malcolm. I'm just gonna go to Friedrich a moment. <laughs> Is there, are there any more of these? Do you have any more here? <laughs> He's rolling around in the mud. He's gonna shake him. <laughs> Friedrich! Do you have any more of these? Oh, oh it hurts. Oh. <laughs> All of me hurts. Likewise. <laughs> Any more Destructo Bot 5 slash oh, retrofitted 6000? Oh, perhaps. I don't remember oh. the inventory sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go on an investigation to look for more Destructo Bot 5000s. Nice. While this is going on, just yeah. a quick. Just you don't have to make a roll. Um, no. At least one of the crates contains one. Oh, right. um, cool. For whatever reason, it hasn't clicked off. Cool. Um, you don't know whether it's... A boiler failure, or whether it's because only one was primed to go after the cage was open. Cool. I'm not sure, but it is in there. Okay. Okay. Um, you only know that because it it's labelled in the same way. Yeah, it's the yeah, right yeah. size. Um, if you crack it open, if you want to, and you crack open the crate, take a look. No, I don't. No, I'm alright for the moment. Good. Cool. I'm going to just inform if we hear the ticking, we've got another one coming. So cool. everybody's aware, okay? No worries. React to the ticking. Cool. Um, I've just been informed by my advisor. Uh, now would be a perfect time for us to take a short break. Um, <laughs> so we will take a short break. We're hoping to be ten minutes because nothing's exploded. The camera happens. held up. The Yay! camera Yay! held up. Yay! All of your funds for us to buy a new cable have been greatly appreciated, yes. and the Thank camera you. is now on. Thank so, you. I feel like we all need Thank to touch you. some wood. Yeah. <laughs> Thank what? you very much for joining us this far. <laughs> and uh, yeah, be, we'll you. be with you in roughly ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs>
Freed one. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. We're still waiting on, on, us. Oh, we're on Stuart. Uh, but we thought we'd say hello. We thought we'd say hello, hello briefly. Chat. We're still Send waiting on Malkin to return. Who's there? Send you right. a, a lot, lots of people there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm always terrible at reading out the names. Um, we got Raikia the Tiefling, we got Anamansa, we got Ko in there, Woo! we got Nezwin, Woo! we've got... Ko, new... we haven't come up in ages. Hey. <clears throat> we've got a newbie, uh, which I, I'm going to torture this. Yavanna Splatter? Yavanna Splatter. Good name. Yav- I like it. I, I like the name, but I'm terrible with names. Um, but hello. hello. How are you all doing? Thank you for joining us, Eve. Your brother? Thank which one's your brother's hand? Nezwin. Nezwin. Is that your brother? Yeah. Ah. And Kakoni's here as well. Hello, Kakoni. You're probably doing artwork while listening. Yes. Uh, and uh, Hedra Helix as well. Hello. Yeah. Um, so, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Lovely. Hello. Yeah, really good to have everyone back. Um, D&D. Thank you for monitoring the chat as well. You're very well. None of us can see it, though we appreciate it. We also haven't got our subscriber thing popping up no, yet. No, okay. so we saw that out. That, but... that notifies us when new people are around. Yeah. So, I'll get that sorted next but week. Bling, reminder, reminder. Bling. Yeah, please feel free to subscribe and like us, do all the things we need to do because we're terrible at marketing, really. Yeah, we are uh, terrible. We're really not very good at it. So the well, and that's my job. That's <laughs> <laughs> literally Jack's job. Um, so uh, if, mm. you, if you could help us out with that, that'd be great. Um, so thank you very much for popping by. It's following in Twitter, isn't it? Not we're in Twitter, what are we on? Twitch. Wrong. We don't even know what we're streaming. What, 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 <laughs> what are we doing? No Facebook idea. Live? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> are we in the metaverse right now? <laughs> Facebook Live. I don't know. I don't have Facebook. It came out and it was already 1995. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just didn't sound good. They're not very good Facebook Live. Oh, fair. Yeah, Facebook in general. Oh, yeah. yeah. Careful, they're listening. To the <laughs> overlord. We have Malkin not doing very well. We have a slightly steamed gnome. Um, and a panty dog. A panty dog. Oh. <laughs> oh. You never said. <laughs> how did you? How are you? How are you, you feeling? Generally? You were going to discuss the armor. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you did look really close, you'll notice that his armor is. Um, Fur. It's essentially stitched into his fur, so you can't oh, wow. see it unless you're up really close. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's a very finely um, spun, um, like steel armor. Me Thank you for the cake. It's not me. I didn't realise <laughs> you'd actually put the cake in front of me. <laughs> you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Um, but yeah, he's he's panting. Maybe he's even probably lying on his back now, on the mud, just kind of. That was so good. Oh. It's been so long. <laughs> it's been like three days since I bought something. <laughs> um, so, Zelen, you were inspecting these crates. You're pretty sure there is a Destructo 5000, which is what they are now called. That's Cannon. Cannon. Um, there's at least one other crate, but it doesn't seem particularly active. No, cool. I'm going to leave it that way. I don't want to disturb it. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, Alantrix, you're currently holding not. Um, are you doing anything in particular? Well, by the door. Uh, by the names. We have to get him out of here. It's not safe. Um, Valen stood there, and he, he's looking towards his older compatriot. He's rolling around in the mud, and I'm going, uh, uh, "Of course, uh, of course, my lord, um, my lady. Sorry, um, you can do you can do whatever you want. It's, it's yours. It's your your property. Um, if you can take him as far away from here, that'd be that'd be marvellous." Yes. And you have to repair that robot. I mean, of course, yeah. I'd, I'd start to it. Looks like it's going to be a hard job. Yeah, uh, did you, you build that? Can I have another one? Sorry? Did you build that? Uh, n- not personally. Uh, ordered. Not good enough. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'll make sure I, f- I feed that back. Um, he starts looking for a piece of paper and he gets a little ink pot out and he's trying to balance his ink pot and he's quite to take notes on what you're saying all at the same time. And he's just frantically writing. It doesn't look like much is going on the page. Um, but he is taking note. Okay. Um, I think we better go. Just to point out, Malcolm is yeah. still lying on the floor, staring at the sky, cut, heavily bruised, slightly scorched. Come on! Down to crawl over. Looking, so. looking for all the Don't world crawl. down to his that he's down to his last point of energy, life, damaged thing. Felix is going to crawl over. He's going to get up onto Malcolm's chest, stand. You know, four legs on Malcolm's chest, look him in the face. You know, he's just a silhouette against the sky, and you can smell just wet dog <laughs> above you. And he's going, 
we've got a girl now, Kim. I was saying, you going to give a big lick on the face? No. Like, <laughs> You've already worked, but maybe you should try using like a sword or something next time. It's way more effective. Did well, you see me? That's pretty good. Can you roll a performance check for me? <laughs> okay. Ugh. It is, oh, 19 plus. He's pretty good at performance. Four, 23. Valen looks up and sees that you're on top of the Malkin. Mm. And at first, he's like dumbstruck. And there's a, it's a, it's a fur knight. You're, you're a fur knight. He's going to um, stay zip and be like, and just... <laughs> The scratch his head. It's like, do I'll, does what he assumes dogs do. I'm just gonna just gonna reach up and and gently pat him on the side of his <laughs> side of his head. Say, good dog, good boy, good boy. Looking up, looking over <laughs> yeah. at, at the gnome. Good boy. Good just boy. as you do that, Balan just starts rubbing his head. <laughs> <laughs> he puts his curl down. And starts making involuntary noises. So, I don't think I'm very well. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> join the club. <laughs> um, but yeah, the as far as you can tell, both names are, are for all intents and purposes incapacitated at this time. <laughs> um, so you may do as you wish with very little interference. Cool. Look, but they can uh, observe place. everything you do. Obviously, they can observe <laughs> everything. Cool. Uh, yeah, Felix is going to. Uh, <laughs> he's. He's going to look at Malkin and he's going to look at the sword. Big brown, wet <coughs> eyes. And just... Yeah, it's alright. Alright. Fine. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Good dog. <laughs> and he's going to follow Malkin to a heel with Malkin. As long as Malkin's got his sword. Marvellous. So, pick myself up reluctantly off the ground and plod over to... Um, Elantrix and not. <clears throat> okay. Um, um, I'll walk back over to Friedrich. <clears throat> Friedrich. On the floor and say, If I were you, I'd clean this up pretty quickly before the rest of the elves arrive. They're not going to smile too kindly on this. He tries to sit up but really struggles. He's obviously more hurt than he would seem. He's just, oh! <laughs> Yes, my lady, I'll see to it. I'll see to it. None of this will be here by the time they arrive, I promise you. I promise you. Please, don't don't report this. I'll say nothing if you say nothing. Get this done. Of course. Uh, cogs are tearing in his brain and he's realising what you're saying. So, of course, I won't say a thing. I won't say a thing at all. Not, not a thing at all. Um, and he kind of pathetically manages to get himself up and starts like generally picking up bric-a-brac that's kind of fallen off this thing very loosely. He's, he's obviously not well, um, but he's trying his best to kind of show that he's gathering things up. Do you have any medical supplies about you? If I did, I'd feel a lot happier. <laughs> there are several crates around, however. Can I have a rummage? Of course you can. Um, it doesn't take you very long, you can crack through them. There is a uh, gnomish standard health and safety kit, um, <laughs> which includes in it first aid. It's a fantastic um, yeah, It's a little <laughs> little dyed green dyed green pine box um, with a white cross painted on the top. <laughs> what does that do? Can it heal any of my wounds? Can it make me feel better? Probably not. Uh, it can make you feel a little better about yourself. Um, it'll make you feel safer <laughs> from infection. From infection, um, marvelous. It's it would likely <coughs> stabilise you if you were on your way out. You would think, but that's probably okay. as much as it can I do. If you're making it obvious that you're looking for healing stuff, um, Felix will push against your leg, and on uh, on the rope that he's got on his back, hanging, he's got a, a potion of great healing. I believe. Ooh, yes, so um, he does. So he'll offer that to you. Ah, excellent. Thank you, Felix. Would that be a good dog? <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's all heads. It's and, all there. Yeah. So this is a kind of a, it's a, it's a vial, and within it is a red, glimmering liquid. Um, you guys are adventurers. You pretty much know that's very likely to be a potion of greater healing. Are you sure you don't need this? He's just kind of like, it's fine. You've taken some damage yourself. He looks. 
happier more than he looks tired. Like like somebody's just gone for a run and they've just had a load of endorphins. He's pretty, <laughs> He's pretty fidgety actually. He's ready to get. Okay, like three coffees. <laughs> yeah. I will take the healing potion. You swig it down. It tastes delicious. Um, somewhere between a strawberry and a berry that you ate as a child that you can't remember. Ribena. Um, yeah, a bit like ribena. <laughs> um, can you roll four d fours and add four to the result? Ooh. That's the damage you take. Well, <laughs> two. It's full of bees. Okay. Ooh, that's three, three, four, and one. So that's oh fourteen. God. Is it? Three, eleven, eleven plus six, whatever. Ten, eleven, plus fifteen. Plus 15. So you would heal the fifteen damage. Excellent. So I'm back up. Back up to full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely warming sensation through your body as your wounds are literally knitted back together. But your bowels just—they <laughs> just don't, <laughs> don't quite take it. <laughs> the sad, well-known side effect of the That's potion. Of course, cool. salt. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm afraid for it. That's all it is. <laughs> so, so yeah, you, back up to you're roughly healed. You're stood in this muddy enclosure. Um, one of the gnomes is desperately trying to hark together bits of broken Galen. Um, the other one seems to be holding his head and making involuntary noises. Is there anything you can do? He's, look, he's looking down at the robot. I was just going to help them pick out the pieces, really. Clear it up. Mm-hmm. He'd be You're pretty able-bodied at the moment, so yeah, it wouldn't take I'm you very long. just go in and help, to be Some honest. Some of the parts are very heavy, like, for example, the cannonball-style arms would take you quite a while. I feel sorry for these two little fellas. Yeah. Trying to earn an honest living, and we fucked it up. They're as little as you. <laughs> no, I know, yeah. <laughs> so we're in. I'm just going to give him a hand. Give him a Friedrich hand. Friedrich looks very hand. nervous that you're helping him. That's fine. Yeah, because he's like, no, no, they said that she'd forget about it if I if I did this. She will forget about it. It's fine, it's fine. It was actually you that did this. I saved the day. <laughs> <laughs> the true hero, this fellow. <laughs> so you're clearing, clearing yeah, just away. Just help clearing away, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I calmed it down. It's all right for a trick. Chill! <laughs> Chill out. It's all right. Something Zolan actually says. To this guy, yeah. Chill. <laughs> Chill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're helping, what, what's the rest of the team doing? Uh, Felix is attending to Malcolm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alamtrix, what are you up to right now? Um, Still holding I'm, not. Yeah, I'm now with these guys. Uh, and who's, who's the most compass mentor? <laughs> What does that mean? Compass Mendes? Uh, she, she motions for everyone to just move away from prying gnomish ears. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it doesn't be hard to do, they're both preoccupied, so yeah. pretty easily get out of your shot. So we all, we all move over into an area. Huddle, huddle, um, huddle, huddle, yeah. huddle, huddle. They're going to be quite annoyed when this man has discovered as missing. We should probably head on to Bastion and we can deposit him. And take him with us? The, the, weird, the guy with the black eyes. What happened to the crate anyway? You weren't much use in your combat, uh, I'll be honest, so maybe a little less from you. What happened with the crate? A little more from the dog. <laughs> we could have got the gnomes to open the crate. They started fighting us. And I fall back. Fair enough. We're going to save that fight. <laughs> we forgot the gnomes to open the crate. We had authority to take this guy with us. We just had to ask for the crate to be opened. Oh, Malcolm did that. <laughs> Shall we go? <laughs> yes, thanks. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> cool. I think we'll leave. North, Exit, stage left. North and left, I think. Is the... As you, you notice that there is another one of these grassy um, paths that move out towards the north. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the grass is roughly uh, kind of a foot tall, but like an inch thick, very wide grass that waves um, in kind of the light and gives this impression of almost moving water. It's back into a it. serene environment. It's before, before we go all the way out of town, yeah. I'm, again, she's going to turn back to the... It's Friedrich. 
Yeah, she's going to turn back to Friedrich and say, Six elves took the prisoner. Can you roll a persuasion check for me, please? With advantage. Uh, persuasion, 16. Mm. He looks in a... Right you are, my lady. Right you are. Six elves. That's what I saw. Then she has some. Cool. As you move out of town, there's another one of these paths that, um, that go on, stretch on relatively straight. It's almost straight as an arrow. But um, the grass, as I've said before, is kind of woven almost. It almost appears, you're not sure if it's natural, if it's made this way, but it seems to work, weave in itself. And it makes almost a, almost like a carpet as you go north. Can we get the sanatorium back on? This music's distracting. <laughs> <laughs> With this, uh, <clears throat> but like I'm in combat still. We're in the, we're in the soft open. We are, yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, it's fine. You can go back to um, Gateway to Hell. Gateway to Hell. Gateway to Hell. So we're um, <coughs> just to roll our minds back. We're looking for like a, a forest out on the left. So it should be dead obvious in this kind of field of grass exactly. as we travel north. He, he, would, he would describe it as a copse of trees. Copse, yeah. yeah. Copse. So you travel north, and we'll we'll go relatively quickly as we travel, because um, you don't see a great deal, actually. Um, there's grass waving, it's kind of this path is impossibly straight. Um, but it's obviously been built directly between two locations, built with purpose. Uh, but you're travelling north, um, most of you by now feel all right. Um, it's getting towards uh, the sun is just setting, so it's actually getting really dark now. Uh, it's setting before your your combat. Malkin, you're going to struggle to see um, as you travel forwards. Um, time continuity. If anyone thinks that's different, um, just let me know. I'm pretty sure the sun was setting, um, so it's getting really, really yeah. dark. Um, before long, Malkin, it gets to a point where you are struggling to see. Mm -hmm. your feet in front of you and um, there's no form of light and um, there is a moon um, so but it's not quite full so you're not quite getting the light um, but bear in mind it is currently golden spell as the season so um, the sun sets relatively late in the evening so you know it'll be very late by this point you'll probably notice during the walk that Atlantrix is looking over her shoulder a lot Would yeah. you, are you, if you're deliberately looking out, you can roll a perception check to see okay. if you can see anyone around. Uh, eight. eight. Um, you're not sure if no, it's nine. Nine. Um, you're not sure if it's because you're nervous or if it's, there's nothing there, but you don't seem to see anybody. Uh, Felix is going to have a conversation with Thorinir as they travel, and he's quite interested in the fact that you can cast magic. So what kind of magic can you cast? Natural magic. I pull from the elements, the <coughs> nature, the trees, the leaves, the weather. Can you do illusions? He's going to look around. He's just going to go... Oh. <laughs> He's going to throw some leaves <laughs> in the sky. That's cool. What kind of illusions can you do? Can you only do natural illusions or can you do unnatural illusions? Well, I have this very skunky one which <laughs> feels unnatural at times. But I'm not going to do it now. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Um, but I think we've learned we don't do magic. Oh, okay. Well, we haven't learned yeah, at no, all. We don't, we don't do dogs. <laughs> we don't do dogs. <laughs> we, don't we don't do magic. magic. Okay. Where possible. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> awesome. Um, what are you trying to push for us? Can you do minor illusion? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> can you do very minor illusions? Yes, yes Good to know. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Do you not see my leaves? Yeah. They're not real leaves. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to try and jump to <laughs> catch one. <laughs> That's amazing. Sweet. You keep travelling north. Um, you travel relatively far. Um, remind me, who's got dark vision currently? Everyone but Malcolm. Everyone but Malcolm. <laughs> yeah, Malcolm, you can't see at this point. Um, Everybody's still there. 
Yeah. So you you're either going to have to light a torch, or else you're going to have somebody lead the way. You follow the light of my pipe if you want. Yeah. You probably see glowing. Again, you see glowing. Yeah. And if you are required to lead Malkin, you are going to slow to a crawl because he's going to be tripping over himself. Um, you're going to have to either light a torch or. Can we drag him to light a torch? Is that slow? You still slow you down. He's still <laughs> yeah. still man sized. Do you have a torch? Okay. If I have a torch, yeah. I'll give you a torch. Don't or a torch. Um, Malcolm could always hold you onto your rope. It's on my back. I could guide him like a guide dog. They have them in their corner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can do that because uh, I don't think I've got a torch because of my backpack. Oh no, we got a pack from the. I've got a torch. Yeah. Yeah. Are we afraid of anything? Is it safe to light a torch? Are we afraid of anything? I'm not afraid it's of anything. We've not afraid. come across any natural no, we have torches. Torches are magic. No, we can have a torch. People must yeah, roam these lands all the time, right? Yeah, okay. I will, you think I, I will light a torch. Cool. You light a torch? I'm worried about what that monk said. What monk? The fast man who I assumed was Sildan? a monk. Sildan? <laughs> yes. Ah, Sildan. Uh... <laughs> what, did, what, what are you concerned about? He said people are aware of you. What you told us not to trust everybody we come across. Yes. That's a good point, though. But if you're to trust people when they say to be careful, um, be an unusual lie. They could have. Other, Don't be careful. They could have. <laughs> they could be the good. He might know the good are looking for us. He could be an evil fellow. He could say lay low. Try and uh, try and have supposedly good people walk right by. Because he knows. Who knows? If I u- so if I if these are all just voices coming out of the dark. Yeah. <laughs> so if I use Felix's lead as a, it's not lead. <laughs> as a, as a, um, you no matter what way you do it, you're still going to be slow. Have a torch. Um, because if somebody's dragging you, you're still going to be falling over. Um, it's it's very <clears> disconcerting <throat> to walk around the dark, even for somebody with your skill. Um, you physically can't see. <clears throat> do you think it's safe? No. <laughs> Well, you can't see, you so. say. I've got a plan. I've got a plan. I've got a plan. Now, every time I have a long rest, Zodin speaking. I get to roll one of my dice and yeah. make a an experimental. I rolled it. My experimental dice come for a potion of flight. So if we give it a Malkin, he'll hover, and then we can pull him on a rope. He can't trip over anything. For one hour. We can just we can just drag him through the air. And walk near trees. Yeah. <laughs> Only about a foot off the floor, <laughs> we just drag him. You'd have to take a long rest, and you only took one. You know, you, you've been, I, I'm no, you're with, the, with the very last long oh, rest, I rolled. It, yeah, yeah oh, was, wow. so I that was I must we was in I the middle of stuff, and I had. I'm, I'm going to be honest, sir. I feel like that's a more concerning thing for someone to see. <laughs> There's a group holding a torch. <laughs> a, a, a dog with a five foot sword pulling, pulling a man that, like a balloon. A man balloon. <laughs> I think if we want to stay Bob. hidden, Bob. maybe that's our best shout. We're hidden, <laughs> from, we're hidden from half. We're hidden from half the races. Only the people with dark vision will see us, right? Yes, elves. the people we're worried about are elves. <laughs> if, we, if, if we walk in the long grass, he'll just look really tall. <laughs> With really long legs, right? Why is his leg so long? <laughs> Birth defect. So we're going to say. I'm going to throw the potion, Malcolm. I, I can't catch it. He's so noble. He's throwing me the potion. Bonk. <laughs> what was that? This is a great idea. I've thought this through. It's a great idea. Mm. But I'm not going to force it upon you. I'm going yeah. to give you the potion. You may drink it if you wish. But I am going to go with a great idea. Walk in the long grass. What does this grass. do, Zolan? You'd be easier to uh, manoeuvre. <laughs> Where did you get that potion from? Where's it? So every time I have a long rest, I can make, oh, make I can make an experimental yeah, yeah. Um, salve, and I just roll a d6, and I'll get an, I'll just get a random um, a random alchemical I think concoction, um, and mine was flight. Got flight. I think I'll pass for the moment. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I might hold on to this if that's all right. Just you might, if you wish. Yeah. You never know fizzy. when something like this might come it in. Is, yeah. It's, up, it's, up, like up, it's upside down. The liquid is held in the top of the bottle, and the the gaseous space is oh, at the I bottom. Like, yeah. Are you gonna? Like a torch now. <laughs> no, in rage, I'm going to walk off because that, fan- <laughs> that was a fantastic idea. <laughs> and it disappointed me. So underappreciated. Yeah, he is, yeah. So we're just Thank, thanks, so I'm sure this will come in very useful, tucks it in his belt. Presumably, we've spoken to Not at some point during Likes this a walk. torch. <laughs> He's, um, yeah, you can talk to him. He will remain in silent unless you talk to him. He's just looking at you all most of the time. So, what do I call that? Uh, 
potion. It's called, it's called a potion of flight, I potion believe. Of flight. Okay. Um, you'll notice if you are watching him specifically, as he looks around, he takes it in turn to alter parts of him, his physical presence. You can still see that it's an illusion, but he masks his physical presence. But he actually takes turns in small features from each of you. He'll take turns, kind of just seeing what they look like and kind of playing with them. Um, in his own, in his own expression, yeah. <laughs> maybe That's just cool. the nose or yeah. like different areas, but he's definitely playing with his appearance um, as he walks along. But other than that, he's completely quiet. So you come from Bastion? Uh, I'm. Uh, you'll notice his stutter disappears now. It's a relatively calm environment, and I yes, I know I know the people of the Bastion quite well. Do you know a man called Sildan? He's very fast on his feet. Yes, yes, I know Sildan. Yeah, he's like Great Dane. Mm. Super quick. Yeah, Is he trustworthy? It depends. We have many different opinions. Um, Are never... you trustworthy? That again, I suppose it depends who you ask. If you were to ask Silden, he'd probably say no. Why is this? We differ on um, what we think the Bastion's purpose is. What do you think the Bastion's purpose is? Sadly, I don't think there's a simple answer to how <coughs> how we how we figure out how to live. I've spent most of my life in hiding. I just want to feel safe, and the elves aren't going to give us that. We we have to make a council. Um, we have to entreat them. We have to bargain with them, that we have to carve out a small area perhaps that we can live in peace, unharmed we're not going to solve this through bloodshed, they will win they're bigger than us, they're more determined, they're versed in combat it's lunacy to think that we have any chance of defeating them, we must meet them with a diplomatic goal in mind, create a legislative council be, be shown as a, as a city state almost have some kind of plan He's nodding along, but he doesn't understand half of what he's saying. He's like, mm hmm, mm hmm. I'm a fur knight. What are you? I wish I knew. Oh, are they more like you? Not that I've ever met. You're unique. I doubt it. Felix is pretty unique. Apex tells me things from time to time. Who is Apex? Um. It's probably best that we don't talk about that. Okay. Are we going to meet them at Bastion? I don't think so. Okay. Only I've met Apex. He's in your head? Uh, in a manner of speaking, yes. That is concerning. How did you end up in that cage? Um, it's quite <coughs> embarrassing. Um, of course, everyone's talking about the rumours. There's a group of people who supposedly came here and uh, know about Void, know what happened to him. Um, <coughs> I was travelling to Wick, thought I could get there before Sildan could. Um, I guess I didn't, being where I am. You were travelling to Wick for... Well, there's this rumor going around. There's a there's a group of people who I know it sounds crazy, but a group of people who defeated a god. Wow. That's if, if I could have brought fun. them back to the bastion, if I could have talked to them, um, got them to co convince people that actually we don't have anything to win against, that we need to create some form of body, some kind of understanding with the elves, so we can be left in peace. People would listen. You really think that that people would go for this? That you can you can what become an independent state? I'd rather that than watch them all die. What do you have to offer for them to give you your independence? Right? What do you what, what do you offer the elves for them to give up territory and to give up autonomy over these people? I hope. I think. Throughout my life, I've seen fear. I know what fear looks like. I get it. 
they're frightened of us, but we need to show them there's nothing for them to fear. Um, if we contain us, this group of people that are uncontrollable, if we can offer them that containership, maybe, just maybe, they'll let us live out our lives. I mean, what's the alternative? There was a wise man named Badua once. Would have been a great place for you, but that's not there anymore. Never met him, I'm afraid. And he was a wise man, but he wasn't in the Elven Kingdom, and it seems like maybe you and your people should leave the Elven Kingdom. In order to leave, we have to pass through a gate. In order to pass through a gate, we need to notify them we're here. Some of us struggle to hide, mm. despite our best efforts. Shame. Have you spoken with any of their leaders? The Elven Kingdom. Um, well, Bandor was in the Navy, um, so he knows some of the uh, naval officers. Um, you can imagine how that turned out. Uh, Sildan, there's rumours that he's um, some kind of relation to a duke. Um, it was promising, um, but Sildan doesn't exactly agree with diplomacy. Um, so we, we haven't made a whole lot of headway. Uh, to be honest, the Bastion, it's a collection of people. But all of those people have different ideas. We have the Halfling Liberation Front making God knows what, and now God knows what, and intense um, explosives, probably. Uh, we have displaced farmers. We have elves. We have um, people who want revenge for losing their homes. We have people who just want to be left alone. Women, children. Um, getting anyone to agree on anything is difficult. Did you say the Halfling Liberation Front? Oh, yeah. That sounds fantastic. The Sebastian? Well, a good number of them, yeah. Let's get going. Sounds like you need uh, a group of heroes. Yeah, I'm lucky to have met you all. Yes, you are. But you are going to have to turn down that brightness. I'm just really struggling to see you. I don't really don't understand what you're talking about. I'm, I'm like literally a jet, a jet black doggy, so... I don't know what you're on about. Really? Yes. Interesting. Well, no, I, I, can, I can see you. Uh, something that Malkin's holding. Um, that shield. Uh, and your satchel. Yeah, pretty nice. lit up. <laughs> what did you say for you? <laughs> Magic Papa. <laughs> I'm a what? <laughs> but if I can see it, there might be somebody else there who can as well. I don't even know what you can see. You're freaking me out. Um, He's going to trot on a little bit up ahead because it's like weirding him out. He's like, oh, I'll, uh, I'll take point. Come on, Malkin. <laughs> I'll go, go with him. He's walking his Malkin. <laughs> <laughs> And you are still going to move slowly unless you like a torch. So you're moving around. I have got. I have oh, got you got the torch lit? Yeah. Ah, in which case he's not walking. He's about to leave. So yeah, you, you travel fairly quickly. Um, unless anyone's got anything asked to not, he'll remain pretty quiet. Um, he seems to be kicking himself a little bit, um, but you're not entirely sure why. Something didn't quite go as he'd like, and he's not very good at hiding his emotion. Mm. What? Sorry? What did you want to say? It's nothing. I um, I got a little carried away, a little friendly. That's all. You can roll an insight check if you would like. Twelve. Twelve. Well, it's getting there. Um, he's obviously revealed more information than he would like. Um, Everything else he was pretty fraught out with, you noticed him look very skittish when you mentioned the word Apex. Cool. Sildan mentioned, we met him on our way out of Whip. Sildan mentioned <coughs> that... You met was, with Sildan? We met with Sildan, yeah, 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 he warned us. He didn't tell us who uh, who not to speak in Bastion. He sent us to Bastion, he wanted us to go that way, but obviously to join his cause and not your cause. 
but he ran into Wick to try and erase all evidence of us from inside Wick. Do you know why he would erase that? Rip it in. Why would he want to erase all evidence of you? No idea. You were you you were travelling from Wick. It's the only place that way. That I can't I get I can't be that can't be right. You you stayed in Wick. You stayed in Wick for years. Been there for a couple of years. You, you stayed there for two years Precisely. in Wick. Precisely two? Precisely two. Couple ish. You. You are them. You, you, just, you are them. Did you, you just see us in the town? Do you think we could kill a god? Malcolm nearly died to a gnomish construct. <laughs> but you're from Wick. You've been in Wick for two years. You, you're, you're them or you know, you know them. You. 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 You, you are them. You are them. Who is them? The, 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 the heroes. The. You. You, you defeated a god. This is the only hero I god. know. This he's guy. up front and you can just, you can just see his little like, <laughs> fluffy tail and he's got a little prance on so his little butt's getting left and right. He's got a sword hanging along his back and he's just like, mm, 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 yeah. <laughs> now I've heard of these, I've heard of these heroes and I don't think they're us. Roll a deception check. With disadvantage. Disadvantage. Because <laughs> you're <laughs> so heroic. Because <coughs> he is pretty certain. Da 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 da. That's deception. It's a ten. It's a ten. Uh, uno memento, por favor. Other words. Spanish. Uh, Spanish. All of a sudden, he seems deflated. De oh, I'm. I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me. I, again, I'm getting. I'm getting. I'm getting Mm, I'm getting carried carried away. That's all. What did you think these these heroes were going to be able to achieve? I mean, you know, you want to you want to create a a, a, a city a, a a home. What 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 need do you have from from fighters? We don't need fighters, we need, we need symbols. Ah. Most of us, some of us who are sensitive to such things knew of Void's presence. You by now will know that I have certain abilities granted to <clears> me. <throat> um, Void made them very difficult. Um, let's just say that the way people think wasn't exactly calm um, while Void was around. Mm. And then for two years, near bliss and I don't know if they can do that for me maybe they can do that for everyone what do you think Sildon would do with these heroes if he found them um Sildon thinks that we have to become a thorn in the side of the kingdom he thinks that the only way to gain any kind of respect is to you raise farms cause damage at supply lines involve us in banditry. I have heard those heroes are quite the terrorists. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think that I always thought they might be trying to do the best they can in a world that doesn't exactly help. Fair enough. Have you ever thought that maybe these heroes aren't heroes and they're just people that got thrust into a journey which they never wanted to be in? Potentially may have achieved something extraordinary from very ordinary people. Can you not become a hero? Or your friends in Bastion? That may be true. I think when ordinary people find themselves doing things that are heroic, that's the best kind of symbol we can have, right? I don't want them to have fallen from the sky in balls of fire like the rumours would have us believe. I want them to be people. Interesting. Well, we'll learn more about Bastion, I think. We're going to talk to some more people. You continue to travel north. As you travel north, um, there's much of this rolling grass, <coughs> and before long, even in the, the dark light, you start to see um, 
a, a relatively large group of trees on on the left hand side of the path, which you know to be the, the correct yeah. pops of trees because it's the only one you've come across. Everything else is just <coughs> rolling hills. And um, there's some kind of undulation of the ground behind this copse of trees. Um, there's obviously it's not quite as flat, um, but there is this this relatively big copse of trees. As you as you approach it, even with your dark vision, you can make out um, that they're fairly deciduous. There's not um, anything unnatural about them. They haven't been planted. They've, they've probably always been there. Um, but as you get a little closer, um, the path keeps going straight on, but this, these trees are grouped on your left. Um, I would imagine, unless somebody's got a crazy idea to go somewhere else, that is the way you're going to be heading. Um, not seems to see it fairly Fairly, regu fairly regularly and cuts the path. Um, you'll notice as not cuts the path, he's very cautious about where you're treading and make sure that the grass isn't bent or particularly out of shape as you move. He's not doing a particularly good job of it, but he's trying. <laughs> um, and he's trying to kind of gather the grass together as you go. And you enter this copse of trees. Um, because it is deciduous, um, there's no grass below it. So this, the tree canopy has blocked out a lot of the light um, and it's caused the Kind of natural fauna to die off. Um, it's a fairly natural process. It's not it's not kept in any way. Um, and not continues to walk through. Um, your torch illuminates this fairly brightly, and the shadows of the trees start intersecting at strange angles. Um, not talks to you all and kind of says, "Look, um, it's just through here. Um, I can I can t I'd love to take you the rest of the way. Um, I could maybe introduce you to Pandor, perhaps. Um, it's going to be late, maybe." Bandor will probably still be up, but um, I imagine everyone else would probably be asleep. Um, but maybe I could find you somewhere to stay for the night if you're if you're interested. Yeah, do the rest. That would be great. Yeah. He continues walking, and as he does, um, this tr this group of trees is actually much denser, much bigger than you think. <laughs> um, you would have thought that without a guide, it probably would have been easy to lose track of where you are um, and get a little bit lost. Um, you're not sure if that's deliberate, if it's magical, or if it just happens to be the case. Um, you're welcome to try and find out. Poor foreigner. Admiring them. Yeah. It's anyway, I haven't listened to anyone, anyone saying. <laughs> 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 but yeah, these trees, you're not sure whether it's magical or, or deliberate, or whether it's just trees. You've no idea. But you would have thought that um, actually it's a little, for some reason, a little bit confusing. It might be the way the light's intersecting with the trees. You're Can I sure. make some investigation? I would like to know if specifically if they are magical. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know if we're, we're dealing with some free an magic an users. Arcane, arcane. arcane. Yeah, it's not brilliant. Um, but you can try an investigation if you want to. Uh, well, an arcana would be 12. It's going to be specifically to see if this is... Yeah, I want to know if we're dealing with free magic users. Cool. Um, you're not sure. Yeah. You can't immediately tell. Mm. If, it's, if it is magic and you're not sure, it's a bloody good job. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, you, wouldn't, you probably wouldn't have been able to tell. Felix every maybe like a hundred meters mm. might just pee against the tree a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. I, know, um, I, might, I, might, I might go for the <laughs> no. <laughs> go for the nudge. Um, tap on the nose. No. To, no. <laughs> to try and uh, track his path with his nose. Oh, um, okay. He's center. Yeah, he's center. Yeah. He is center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, does anything feel weird? Like, did the sense move around in a way that he doesn't expect, or? Not particularly. You interact with them, um, and the trees seem to be there. They are trees. Yeah. Um, so they seem to be relatively solid. Um, again, if it if it is magic, which you're not sure. Yeah. It's a bloody good job. Can you smell if any other animals have been in this way? Of course. You can give it a go. Investigation check, I imagine. Unless you want to do a nature, actually, nature check would work. Uh, either is bad. It's only seven. <laughs> cool. The information will be different if you choose nature or investigation. Which one would you like? Uh, he is going to do nature. Nature. Um, it seems like a natural occurring forest. Um, you are aware, being from the Elven Lands, that there aren't a huge amount of magical creatures or large creatures and small birds, that kind of thing. From what you can tell, small birds live here, squirrels, that kind of thing. Nothing in particular jumps out at you. He licks his lips when the animals come on his mind. Delicious. Squirrels? <laughs> Wouldn't mind what you <laughs> Continues on. You continue through for what seems like a fairly long time. And if no one's doing anything, we'll continue through. These trees just keep coming and coming. And you come to, um, you haven't really noticed, but on your left and your right hand side, mounds of earths have started to build up. And before you know it, you're traveling through um, almost like a valley. 
Um, and the trees are kind of deliberately going vertically out of this valley. Uh, and the trees get lesser and lesser. And these kind of si these um, raised mounds of earth on either side of you give way to a, the grass again. This grass appears. Um, but in front of you is another one of these kind of um, woven paths. But it opens up. And what you see is the mouth of um, two intersecting, almost sheer drop valleys um, coming down. And in the centre, slightly below you, probably rolling down 10 feet in a gentle incline, the tents. And there's a lot of them. Is this it? You're counting 10, 100, 200. There's groups of tents. And they're varying colours. You get oranges and, and purples and um, banners here and there. And all of a sudden smells of smoke that you haven't smelt before. And smells of um, perhaps interesting spice. But also the smell of mortal beings living together. You know, the smell of sweat and also excrement. And well, various other yeah. things, yeah. Um, kind of billowing up. Um, it's relatively quiet, but you do hear a little bit of hustle and bustle. It's very late, probably the middle of the night at this point. It's a forest festival. <laughs> Quick, Zolan's. to the loot tent. <laughs> <laughs> Zolan's the straw. He hates camping. <laughs> of course he does. He hates camping. He was expecting a bastion. What oh, this? The, the, the name is figurative, yeah. uh, Grant, um, <laughs> yeah, but it is, um, it, it will be somebody, some, some, somewhere to stay. God. Is, there, is, there like a, is there like a prominently large tent? Is this just like little, like when you go to a festival, it's just the same tent, just strewn across? So there's various, there, there various regal types one, of nice tent. Um, so you, you have ridge tents and bell tents, and uh, they're all of different sizes. Uh, there's a couple of kind of big gazebo type things that are open. That might be okay. um, there's a couple of uh, marquee style tents that are very large. Um, towards the centre, there's a relatively large bell tent in kind of a canvas colour, but the rest okay. are just hodgepodge, multicolored tents of various. It's got a little sizes. bit of structure. Yeah, it just seems to be. Bit. Vaguely, you can kind of see from your kind of ten foot above, you can just see all of the tents rising, but it seems to be a central avenue at least. Um, Definitely still mildly dis disappointed. Yeah. What's wrong? Tents, camping. <coughs> yeah. Mm. Not last, time, no. last time I was in a tent, I got attacked by animals. Exactly. Tents. No. Mm. I think it's fine. It's really what you make of it, you know. You just find yourself a good blanket, <laughs> roll yourself up. I was expecting a bastion. What exactly were you expecting? A bastion. What, quite, do, you, what do you mean? It's quite a, quite a, gra I wanted a, quite a grand place. I was thinking <laughs> of like a potentially castle here, something. You know, enclosed walls, something nice, yeah. I don't even think that was inferred, and I'm not that smart. I just thought, <laughs> as, a, as a bastion, I didn't think it was going to be a hovel. Yeah. I would have called this the hovel, not the bastion. <laughs> okay. To be honest. That seems slightly disappointed in your yeah. reaction. Well, I'm, I'm disappointed I'm going to turn to not and say. Okay, is there, uh, is there anywhere we can stay for the night and we can see how things look in the morning? Um, I can take you to Bandor. Uh, he's effectively, our, I guess, our leader, if you can call this group of people needing a leader. Um, he brought us together. Is he your leader? Is he Sildan's leader as well? We both, is he your leader? We both talk with Bandor. Okay. Um, we have different motives for doing so. Bandor, it's probably best you don't go into this too deeply with him, but to him, Bastion is a group of people, and we are united by our number. Um, he worries that by coming too hard down on either side, we'll lose numbers. I'm not going to lie, not. I don't think you have much of a chance with diplomacy with this. You're not offering an awful lot, are you, here? Do you be surprised what we can do? I don't mean to be rude, but yeah. Do you want to take on a kingdom? Do you think we have a better chance if we stop burning their farms? I don't know, but uh, I think it might be time to be realistic. This doesn't, this doesn't look like mm. a resistance or a... Exactly. That's what I'm trying to tell them. They're on, a, they're on enough of us. We can't, we can't win no, this. Definitely, yeah. We you can't not. fight a war, can you? Exactly. A lot of these people are ex- or quite a few of them are ex-military or rebel groups along with displaced peoples, magic users who've managed to find their way here. Um, there's certainly power here and also a lot of smart people but we're just too disorganised. We need 
to unify, create some kind of demand, some kind of legislation. Stop taking this seriously. We can't be a disorganized group forever. The elves are clever, though. If they don't already know we're here, they will be soon. Take us to your leader. Oh, you swine! <laughs> <laughs> you swine! <laughs> oh! Desperate, sir. Um, Nox, <laughs> Nox starts walking um, through the centre alley of this uh, these tents. And as you're walking through, you see things that you probably haven't seen, either in a long while, if not ever. Um, you see groups of halflings, mostly in kind of leather smocks, um, grizzled kind of... Um, HLF written across their back. Yeah, <laughs> knuckle dusters, the whole shebang. Um, but yeah, they, these kind of these groups of halflings who are still up, kind of around fires, kind of talking to each other. Everyone kind of looks around at you, but doesn't seem too taken aback that you're who you are. Um, there's the occasional elf here and there, but mostly people seem to have gone to bed. Um, the tents are all bright in different colours. Um, as you get towards the centre, um, you'll notice there's a few tents that, while now closed, have little signs out front. Um, that are normally chalkboards or something that's been written on a board using some kind of inks or paints. Um, and they seem to be shops, um, a library, um, perhaps one of them is even a school. You're not entirely sure, but um, there seems to be um, kind of a commotion. As, as soon as she sees the library, does it, does it look open? No, it looks very... <laughs> sh the, the tent has been, has been shut. Okay, she's just look at, she's, her head turns towards it immediately. Yeah. Um, as you know, you continue walking, you probably, you probably lose her from the group a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> just looking at it. Yeah. Um, well into a library. Yeah. Loves a library. Yeah. So there's that with you. <clears throat> Sign out. Back in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very sophisticated system. <laughs> yeah. um, but you travel towards the centre, and as that happens, you start to hear music um, actually comes across, and you hear um, kind of a strange instrument. Um, that you would probably immediately think, um, if you know of the instrument, which you may not, um, is something called a concertina. Um, so it's a, a wind or a pushed, bellowed instrument um, that's playing in the background. And there's somebody singing, and he's singing in Elvish. Um, you all understand Elvish, so you can understand it perfectly, but it has a strange sound, it has a beautiful musical quality, which I will not do justice. Um, but it kind of but sounds... you should try. But I will try. <laughs> um, it sounds like... Arada vura sara nahura nada And translated it is... As I walked by the dark side one evening so fair to take the salt waters and breathe the salt air. I heard an old navy man singing this song. He said, take me away, boys, my time is not long. And instantly, Malkin, you're taken back to your day's service. It's a song you know very well. It's actually written in common. It's not an Elvish song. Um, and it was specifically sung um, when people died in the Navy. And it's, an, it's a naval song. Um, it went around all the uh, camps, so you would have heard it in the army and in various places. But specifically, it was normally sung when you lost somebody in naval battles. Beautiful performance, by the way. Oh, good one to Jack, yes. then. Yeah. Very good. Very, very, very good. good. Um, it keeps going, but I won't bore you with the rest of the, the details. Um, but it gets louder and louder as you get towards the centre. And you get towards this relatively large canvas tent. Um, and outside the front of this canvas tent, there are stones laid on the ground in a circle. Um, it's obviously some kind of impromptu meeting point. Um, and sat there, playing a concertina, um, is a man you instantly recognise. Forearmed! No, wow. sadly not. Concert, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Playing a duet with himself. Um, but sadly not. Um, he uh, looks identical to the form that Not had taken. Oh. Um, and he's sat and he's wearing um, a blue military style coat. Um, he wears a linen, uh, almost like smock shirt um, that's open at the front. It's not quite tied up like it should be. Um, he's wearing kind of just under knee height leather boots that are buckled um, but are dirty 
um, not quite as good as they should be. Um, discarded at his foot, there is an empty glass bottle. Uh, and he's playing this concertina and singing to himself. Um, instantly when you hear the music, you feel relaxed. Um, you feel like the weight of the world is dripping away from you. Um, but that's the scene you're greeted with. And not kind of stops dead a little bit. Um, and you notice frantically his face form shifts a couple of times <laughs> um, and eventually settles on, if you imagine, you know, like the Lego man dot dot eye kind of scenario, the most generic <laughs> yeah. human oh, face yeah. you can think of. It's almost horrifying. Yeah, almost simple horrifingly yeah. simple. Um, kind of reverts yeah. to that. It's a flesh plate with some dots on it. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Like a child. Yeah. Finger painting. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the smiles is a bit too big. Yeah. Unless you interrupt him, he will, he will just keep singing. I'm interested in what it did not, and why not won't show his real face, I guess. What is your what is your real face not? I would have thought you'd be comfortable around your people to... Um... I, 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 I guess it's my way. Um, people don't really like it when you use their face, um, but people tr trust Bandor. Um, I, I just hoped you'd tr tr trust me a little bit more if I look more like him. I'll trust you a little bit more if I knew who you was. Some of us have spent a long time pre pretending. Okay, I won't push him anymore. He seems very nervous. Yeah, yeah, Obviously yeah. you guys are still have kind of yeah. broken the illusion. Uh, yeah. So even though he changes it regularly, you kind of know the trick by now. Yeah. So you can still see this horned okay, structure yeah. below, um, and this kind of almost like shimmering image that's in front of him. But yeah. you can you can bet that if somebody had seen him for the first time, they wouldn't recognise who he was. Yeah. So this is Bandor. The, the, the very same, yes. Um, Bandor seems vaguely aware of your presence, but he's swaying slightly. Um, as he sat playing this concertina, and he is continuing to sing. Do you not like Bandor? I'm just saying it quietly enough so he can't hear. I think, I think he's great. Then why did you take his form when you were caged? I. He's trustworthy. He's. He's as pure an elf as I know. People, people trust pure elves. So if they come looking. For their missing prisoner, they'll go to him, not you. I, you're, you're, you're right. I, I, I didn't mean, I didn't, I didn't mean for that. Um, I just, I just panicked. I, I, I just thought that. I, I just thought that he, he would know how to get out of it. That's all. I pr promise. Is Bandor by a fire? Like, is he, or is he just sat on his own? Playing? He's sat on his own playing the concertina. There's no fire lit, but there is a. Now that you mention it, there is obviously a, an area at the front that has yeah. a place for a fire pit. Um, it's obviously got scorched earth in it. They don't yeah. have fires here. Cool. Felix will probably just go up to Bandor. He knows he's kind of the guy we're going yeah. to, and just sit mm. and wait. He's still singing. Um, he's kind of <laughs> singing. Listen. Yeah. Wrap me up in me oil skin. He's his tail. <laughs> he does like the music. No more on the tops <clears throat> I'll be seen. Just tell me, old shipmates, I'm taking a trip, mates. And I'll see you someday in Celeste's embrace. Between songs, he'll, he'll pour at the air, which is what dogs do when they, they want more. <laughs> yeah, and he'll, he'll keep going, so he's singing the song, but he doesn't seem too bothered about the fact that you're there. Um, he stops playing the concertina only briefly to try and pick up the glass bowl, mm -hmm. and takes tries to take a swig from it, realises it's empty and just drops it over the other side, and then continues playing. It's a fluid motion, as if yeah. he'd done it several times mm -hmm. before. He's a practice drunk, this fellow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put a Lantrix to one side, away from not, mm -hmm. and say, does this, this fellow tickle your melons? Is he? 
It's very forward. You know the prophecy? <laughs> you know the prophecy? You were talking about the prophecy. Right, that gets you going, doesn't it? The horned elves. It's a race I've never seen. Have you seen a horned elf before? Never. Never. What do you think about this guy? They come up in the books. Mm-hmm. Anything else? They are somehow involved, but whether this chap knows anything, I don't know. I think we should probe him tomorrow. Not in that way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to make of him. I don't think he's lying, but yes. Definitely could deal with finding out where he's from or if he has any other kind, because I guess you and your mission are looking for these people. Are we on that mission now? I'm not on that mission. Still don't believe in the mission yet. Well, it's, a, it's a coincidence. I've never heard of a horned elf, and now we see one. I don't believe they're from the mainland. Okay. I had a, had a sea elf once. Is it a sea elf? Nolus. He wasn't from the mainland. He wasn't from the mainland either, no. Do you ever see a sea elf? What a sea elf? Are they sea elf as long as a sea elf? I don't think I have. Come on. Yeah, it was. (laughs) That's good. Not that I meant it. Sorry. (laughs) Cool. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I never met one before. But I know. Maybe useful. Maybe. Okay, so when there's a, a, a useful gap between verses. Um, I'm going to go over to Bandor and say, excuse me, <coughs> um, not here, not in this bag, Mar- marvellous, that is, that is good news. Um, he and says, who might you be? Uh, not says that, um, you might be able to find us a place to stay for the night. Of course, there's the Bastion, there's plenty, plenty of places to sleep. Where would you like to stay? The world is your oyster. We are free people. Whereabouts are you from? North. <laughs> north. North, north. How north? Did you get to the forests or need not that far north? Uh, Come on, don't play with been me, boy. From, from around and about. Marvellous. I like to see that. I like to see that in the man. No idea where you're from. Or where I'm going. I love it. Spent some time in the city, spent some time in the forest. You know how it is. Let me see. And does this um, man who doesn't know where he's from have a name? Usually, yeah. You're called usually. (laughs) It's even a stranger name than not. I was going to say, I mean, you know, you, you have a friend here who's not. I, perhaps I may be. I like that. But yeah, you're, you're welcome. You're taking on numbers as fast as we can swell. Don't suppose you've got a tent on you? No. Well, in that case, you've got a choice. Uh, you can sleep out under the stars. Seems a nice night for it, given its golden spell and all that. Um, probably spare a few blankets from my place. Uh, other than that, you've got me. Uh, sailed and got back just before nightfall. Um, quick that far, really. <laughs> so, he's probably got a room. Um, or you can stay with Not, you seem to know him already. Not? Uh, not steps forward, so this point. This is odd. Of course, um, uh, you, can, you can stay with me. It's just a little, not to everybody's taste, a little. As long as we've got a blanket, that'll be fine. Just somewhere to rest down for now. We'll sort things out in the morning. What's your hurry? You can stay up with me. Night's still young. I'd be keen to hear more of your wind machine. Oh, this old thing. Uh, they were pretty much standard issue back in the day. Now, you don't see them so much these days. Um, I think they were gnomish originally. Serves me well. Packs down really nice. <laughs> so Malchus sort of <laughs> indicates the bottle, says, uh, 
You got any more of that anyway? As much as I can spare. Been there, you're a drinking man. Used to the hard stuff, were you? Wouldn't say no. Uh, he goes back into his tent and comes out, and he's got two bottles of dark liquid. Um, he bites the cork out of one and takes a swig and then passes it over to you. Take a swig. Can you make me a constitution saving <laughs> throw? <laughs> Ooh, uh, the from Callus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, you see the darkness. <laughs> that's a minus one on my constitution. That's six. Six. Um, you me. <laughs> You're not sure whether it's burnt you or whether that's your own vomit. But, um, but you managed to keep it down, just about. Um, it's some kind of distilled liquor. Um, you probably have tasted a similar thing before with your time in the military. Um, they they see it as a right to all military um, men within the Elven Kingdom to drink daily seen as something that you are allowed to do. Uh, the problem is, is carrying beer or wine around is very heavy. Um, so they tend to distill it and mm -hmm. to make it easier to carry it so it's lighter, basically. Um, so there's a lot of this stuff. It varies in quality, and this is about as low as it gets. Um, kind of brandies and very fine liqueurs are normally reserved for, for high officers. Um, but in the Navy, they drink what they can get. So, coughing, retching, and... It's very good, very good. Yeah, it's it's a bloody good, good vintage, as they say. It's good. Yeah, really vintage. Um, he takes another swig. <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> what about your friends? Don't talk much, do they? Help yourselves. Felix has stood on the accordion that he's put down. Yeah. Again, that awkward four-paw stance. And he's just like... I can teach you play if you want. Tall animals to do stranger things. Just play. <laughs> and he picks it up again and will play it fairly yeah. effortlessly. He's not weirded out by a talking dog? <laughs> Doesn't seem to be. If he is, he hides it very well. I, um. You've made a talking dog before? If by night? I've been to Wackler. Well, this is good. This is really good. Nice to meet you, I'm Felix Burnett. <laughs> <laughs> I've been holding my tongue this whole time. You should. I'm a real talker. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You should. Why? It's not safe out there these days. Oh, he's probably. still playing the concertina while yeah. he's talking, yeah. which is obviously quite hard to do, but he seems to be doing it effortlessly. Have you got any other instruments? Tents full of them. Got a war drum if you're interested. Where? Right. <laughs> you in the... Yeah, he just Check. points to his tent. He's flapping in the, yeah. he's flapping in the breeze. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the tent's just open. Felix is going to dig in the tent. He's like, oh, he's going to pop his sword down next to where the fire would be, yeah. and he's going to go into the tent. Yeah, you go in there, there's um, a bedroll on the floor and um, that seems to be where this guy's been sleeping. And there's a couple of other bedrolls that are randomly discarded. Um, there is a pile of um, dark li liquid in bottles. Um, and also dotted here and there, empty bottles. Um, and dotted around this cascade of empty bottles, um, there are musical instruments of various types. There are cymbals, there are, um, there's a lute, there's um, various other um, objects that are obviously of musical quality. And he wasn't lying. There is a three foot long war drum um, that happens to be in this tent as well. That's incredibly ornate. Um, but other than that, not a huge, there's, there's a small crate of personal items, but other than yeah. that, that's all. Well, Felix isn't here to rob him. Um, he's going <laughs> to raise an eyebrow at the war drum below, as you prove be a drum, yeah. and uh, he's going to grab the loot, yeah. go finally up on his uh, his back legs for the first time in a long time, mm. and walk out and start tuning this loot. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, do you play, dog man? Oh, I play a little bit, yeah. You've got to count your hours away when you're a, a fern eye in your arena. Yeah. What? What's your name? I'm Felix. Nice to meet you. Good What's your on name? You. Good on you getting out of Equa. Thank you. The place is um, not great. I've not seen a lot of it. I've seen the arena and I've seen the exit. <laughs> That's about it. It was alright to me, but uh, shall we? And he's gonna sit, tune up the loop. Is he proficient? <laughs> he. 
<laughs> he has a loot as one of his tools, oh, but he's yeah. not. Oh, he's not a proficient. Like mm. he doesn't necessarily have stringent <laughs> players' proficiency. Like bar yeah. chords, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's real simple loot playing. Um, on which might be down to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be you know Batman, but pretty fast. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so they, you will quite happily play the Constina yeah. and just continue. He's a rhythm player. Yeah. You notice that as you as you start to play, um, Bandle will naturally adapt his playing style to kind of work with you. Cool. And so it will cover if you're ever feeling a bit awkward. Oh, it cover much worse. But yeah, he'll cover bits where if you're struggling, he might do a little bit of a flourish yeah. and just like. But he seems to do it like innately. He doesn't seem to be focusing That's on cool. it. That's cool. Yeah. And he sings. He continues to sing. As if nobody interacts with him, he'll continue to sing in the background. Oh no, you watch And he's happy to be listening to that. In the background. And go ahead. Not. Do you have anything you want to say to Bandor? Well, um, I can. I, 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 no. <laughs> In the background, I'm going to take another swig out of the bottle. It's <laughs> 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 just like being at home. The band will know you've been locked in a cage. The band all stops playing. Just all of a sudden, there's like a discord of note. And he, um, he turns around and says, What happened, not? Where have you been? Um, not he's just stuttering he can't get his words out like, look look take your time maybe have a drink relax we can talk about this uh, he takes the swig <laughs> he just seems to <coughs> drink this stuff you don't know how long he's been drinking for but he seems he's a little bit swaying from here there but you don't know whether it's his natural style or whether he's he's, he's drunk it's hard to tell um, Not does sit down on one of these stains and takes a bit of time um begins to talk, um, but he's not really making a lot of sense. He's like, oh, there, there, was, there, there was a cage, and um, I, I, I didn't know what to do, and I was worried, and I, um, I, I took your form, thinking that it would, um, thinking that it would help. And for the first time, you see kind of a wave of concern come over Bandor. Um, he has this kind of nonchalant way of behaving that just seems to kind of echo everything he does. And all of a sudden he seems quite concerned. And he changes from what you see as kind of a relaxed music playing, singing individual to somebody who is a naval officer, almost immediately. Um, and he just looks at Nart and says, I'm sorry old boy, that was an absolutely terrible idea. And with that, we will end our session for this evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. It was a good session. Um, hopefully Marvelous. you enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, it's been wonderful to have you with us. We do this every week, same time. Um, so if you ever want to stop on by, um, if you subscribe, it will tell you. We, we had some new subscribers. Did we? Oh, oh, thank you very, very much. Yeah. Fantastic. Very, very kind of you. Um, so we'll see you all next week. And until that point, we have been. <laughs> Duh. Duh.